to Hawaii, where the Warriors have always made for one of the most festive settings in all of college football. Tonight, they are targeting a big upset win over the BCS-bound Cincinnati Bearcats. ESPN's College Football Prime Time is presented by K Jewelers. And it is Jimmy V Week on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation for Cancer Research in tribute to Jim Falvano and his dream to defeat cancer. Tonight, the Big East champs get their chance to shine again. Cincinnati is headed to the FedEx Orange Bowl, but first, what many are calling a trap game as they visit Paradise to play last year's unexpected BCS team, the Hawaii Warriors. And this Hawaii team full of players who have brought recent glory to the islands. Tonight, they celebrate the senior class, most notably the WAC's co-defensive player of the year, linebacker Solomon Elamimium is wired. My grandfather thought I was from Cincinnati. Yeah, but I told him, sorry, I ain't for Cincinnati. I've been for you eight since I was two years old. Wow. Hey, best luck to you, bro. You too, bro. Sure, man. Hey, man, ball out tonight. All right, bro. Yeah. This one right here. Best defense in the, in the conference right here. Dave Bike putting number 94. Uh, coach, big game. I love your tail, man. I love you too, coach. You have a great one. I you will. Your service. I you will. Have fun. Thanks, you coach. Have fun. I will. Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Tessitore. We welcome you to a late night in Hawaii. This, the last regular season game of the college football season. Both teams have their postseason plans, but still, this game could really stamp the season. Cincy and the Big East, they don't want the reputation to take a hit losing to a team in Hawaii that's viewed as having a rebuilding year. Hawaii, meanwhile, they can put a big feather in the cap in beating a team that's going to be playing on New Year's Day. And let's update you on the BCS situation. Of course, tonight, well, you know what Oklahoma did, and they are expected to hear tomorrow that the FedEx BCS championship will be Oklahoma against Florida. Meanwhile, the FedEx Orange Bowl, these Bearcats taking on Virginia Tech, who won the ACC today. Of course, Hawaii takes such pride in defending their home turf, their star quarterback from a year ago gone. All four starting receivers gone, the legendary offensive genius coach gone. Yet here they are with seven wins and a bowl spot, and they want more. Always a great scene here in Honolulu. I'm now joined by my partner, Rod Gilmore. And Rod, give a lot of credit to Cincinnati and their coaching staff. I don't know that there's a team that overcame more than what they had to overcome at the quarterback position this year. You can't win a championship without knowing who your quarterback is, right? Wrong. Well, they got it done. Just think about what happened to Cincinnati this season. They thought they'd have last year's starter, Ben Mock, but the NCAA didn't give him another year. They went to their senior, Dustin Grutza, but he broke his leg. Then they went back to the inexperienced Tony Pike, thinking he could get it done. He broke his arm. And then they turned to two freshmen, Chaz Anderson and Zach Calaris were the guys. And then they waited for Pike to get healthy, and he came back, and boy, was he on fire, completing 63% of his passes, 17 touchdowns on the season, really brought some stability to that, to that spot, but still not completely healthy, only about 85%. Yeah, similar story for Hawaii. They played some musical chairs at quarterback also, but finally some stability for the Warriors. You know, we saw them earlier in the season, and that run and shoot was misfiring. They were running some option and just not there. They found Alexander. He started the first game, but had two picks sixes they put him on the bench made him watch for a while he learned the offense and in game eight against Nevada he came back in and he was outstanding knew the offense big strong guy strong arm did everything they needed and the offense is flowing right now kickoff when we return but first more from the Warriors most feared Warriors Solomon Elamimian as any year baby we've been through a lot since Florida baby nobody thought we was gonna win you know what I'm saying we 7-5 we born eligible you know what I'm saying? Let's go out there as a family, bro. We ain't a team, we're a family brother. And we're gonna band together tonight, baby. And nobody think we can win. Let's band together tonight. All right, let's go. Come on. Let's go. Everybody hey, let's go. Let's say. go. Hey, stay with me, baby. Family on three. One, two, three. Family.
Sony plays amazing high-def Blu-ray discs, but it'll also play all of your old DVDs. And if you use an HDMI cord and plug it in the back, you'll get the best picture and sound available. I like a lot of different movies. Something that can make me laugh or something that can make me cry, I love them all. Seasonings greetings from your mates at Outback. Get a free $20 bonus card when you buy $100 in holiday gift cards. Seat movers. That's what you'd call us. We'd buy seats up in the nosebleeds and then move down. We'd look for no-shows. Who sometimes did show. Soda spillers. That is going to leave a stain. Go, 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 and then go. we'd swoop right in for the perfect seats. Hello. And goodbye. Want great seats? Your city card could get them. And now, every time you use a participating city card, you're in it for a chance to go on a three-city tour with Nickelback. Want the story of a lifetime? Your city card can help you write it. This telecast is available on ESPN2 and ESPN2 HD. And we welcome you to Aloha Stadium. We told you Hawaii has won 22 of their last 25 games here, but today a very tough test against the Cincy team that's been rolling with confidence. There's the Bearcats head coach Brian Kelly been one of the hot names among potential coaching changes out there but this week he met with the school president heard a strong commitment to the facility improvements and Kelly said I'm staying. And there is Hawaii's Greg McMacken. He knows about improving facilities finishing up his first year as the main man. He was June Jones defensive coordinator. He got the big contract and the changes that coach Jones said were very much needed here at Hawaii. Uh, both these coaches have done a great job this season and had a lot of success and Hawaii's got to be real pleased sitting at uh, seven and five looking at a bowl game after the start they had to the season when they had no offense and was trying to get everything squared away. Since he won the toss they chose to receive. So the senior big Dan Kelly will be kicking off and back deep is the very dangerous Marty Gilliard along with John Goble. Hilliard had a kickoff return of 97 yards for a touchdown at Oklahoma. He can do it against anybody. Pure speed in Gilliard. They kick away from him, and it's Goble. And Goble has a seam. And Goble is across the 40 yard line all the way out to the 41. A 41 yard return. And Cincinnati has been fortunate. To see the emergence of six foot six quarterback Tony Pike broke his left non throwing arm back in September, came back, led the Big East in passing efficiency, Rod. He's got six screws in that left forearm and a plate. And he'll have some surgery after the season to work on some tendon trouble in his wrist. So the spread offense of the Bearcats to work. Two by two is the receiver set, and they're very talented at those positions. Pike. A little bit of pressure steps up in the pocket and that is incomplete as it was drifting a bit out of bounds intended for his favorite target Dominic Goodman. Well there you see the top of the screen the defensive lineup for Hawaii and that is a lineup that is known for bringing pressure as you take a look at Goodman who is a little banged up on the sideline but this Hawaii defense brings pressure long established reputation of blitzing you. Right off the bus. Now Dominic Goodman shook up on that last play. Not what Brian Kelly wants to see. He says when you need a first down he's the guy you turn to and you can see he is in some pain over there as they're working on that right shoulder. Yeah they came down on that right shoulder. He took a hit from Eric Robinson. And that's exactly what they're working on the right shoulder. 78 catches seven touchdowns on the year for the senior seven catches and 23 yards away from being the school's all time leader in those categories. Well he's a big part of their offense. I mean, this offense really revolves around the short passing game. He is a big key and he's in an awful lot of pain right there. Well you look at the way he's reacted. And that is not a good sign that they want to see as they are. And what many are saying a trap game here and then leading up to the biggest game in school history coming up on January 1st in the FedEx Orange Bowl. So as they 
10 to Goodman. Hey, I think that he's actually walking towards the locker room. And he's leaving the field. Big East officials taking time as they dealt with Goodman and also dealt with an issue with the play clock here at Aloha Stadium. This is not uh, not a good start for Cincinnati They They certainly don't want to lose one of their premier players at the beginning of, of the ball game. And it's been a, an interesting week for them as well. You think about the long travel here kind of a bowl like atmosphere very relaxing and then having to are not operating on the field. It will be kept on the field by the back judge. Well, back judge is Brian Platt as John McDade the referee for this Big East crew tells us that the play clocks are inoperable so they will keep it down at field level second and ten now. Goble with the carry testing the left side of that defensive line for Hawaii and he is taken down by Josh Leonard a two yard gain for John Goble. Let's look at the offensive impact players for the Bearcats Rod. Well when you think about their passing game it begins with Gilliard who's a big play guy gets a lot of yards after catch leads the team in touchdowns and you saw Goodman walk off the field. He was the team's leading receiver. Canfield is the number two rated guard in next year's NFL draft. That's how good he is. Third and eight now for Tony Pike without his leading receiver. Three by one Goble in the backfield for Pike. Pike pressured and taken down. And a penalty marker comes in as Josh Leonard piled on and then in come a host of defenders and they may get the call there against Ella Mimian. We'll see. 15 yard penalty. Fourth down. No, it's they called it against Cincinnati. Wow. Yeah, and I was with you. I, in this I, day and age of protecting the quarterback, yeah. they don't call that. Yeah, I, I saw someone fly in at the end of this. Watch this play and watch the attacking Hawaii defense. Watch 17 Elimian come in, and he's going to jump on the pile. And this is after the whistle. And you would think that's what they would have flagged. But that wasn't the case. They flagged Cincinnati and moved them back. So Cincinnati to punt. Huber. And on the return here is Michael Washington. And Washington at the 20 yard line and that's where Hawaii will take over. And they put forth Greg Alexander at quarterback and he's a big physical presence who can take and give a hit as we found out watching a lot of film rod and he yeah. came here from junior college success where he threw 71 touchdown passes in two years as a Juco player and the rest of the Hawaii starters you can see on the top of your screen. He walked in our meeting room yesterday and we thought he was a defensive end or a linebacker. He's, He's a, a big guy. So that run and shoot of Hawaii three by one four receivers and in the backfield is Farmer with Alexander. Alexander now decides to keep it himself and he dives forward out to the 26 and he's not shy about doing that at all Rob. Yeah he doesn't slide very often. I think he takes to heart the fact that he's a big guy 6'3 about 235 240 and he does not look to slide when he takes off running. You take a look at the top of your screen you can see the defensive starters for Cincinnati. It's a defense that's giving up only about 20 points a game and they have 32 sacks on the season. That's pretty good. Daniel Libre now flanking Alexander in the backfield for Hawaii and Libre gets the call here and a good block out in front and Libre all the way out still driving his legs to the 41 yard line. So a 15 yard gain from the senior from right here in Hawaii on senior night. Well, Libre is in there. Okay, Aloha Polaris use their premier back, but this is just an outside run, good blocking at the point of attack, and getting their wide receivers down the field involved in blocking as well. Not known for running the football, but Hawaii just mixing it up here early. Offensive coordinator Ron Lee told us that they want to try to get 100 to 120 yards on the ground to accomplish their goals tonight. Alexander pressure. And Alexander is taken down by who else but Connor Barwin, the Big East leader in sacks. Wow. He came into this ball game with ten and a half sacks, and he is quite a story. He used to play tight end, very athletic. 
just a mismatch for most tackles because of his athletic ability, quick feet, used to catching the ball, running downfield, and just literally runs around left tackles more times than not. Although I thought you were going to jump across the desk yesterday when he said, hey, going to defense, that easy, that's easy. Hey, it's it, mindless. Anybody can play defense. Yeah, I was a little irritated. <laughs> he wasn't talking about defensive backs, Rod. <laughs> Farmer now just out of the backfield from Alexander and only able to get back to the 37 yard line and let's look at the Hawaii offensive impact players. Well it's all about their receivers starts with Greg Salas. He makes spectacular catches great hands he leads the team in receiving yards. Michael Washington this guy is very very quick and been playing well of late. He's a the guy they'll look for across the middle. Malcolm Lane big time speed. He's a mismatch problem on the outside. Match up with him he can run by you. Third down and 15 the line to make is over midfield at the opposing 49. Alexander he gets it out and that is going to be short of a first down to Aaron Payne. A 10 yard gain so that sack by Barwin backed up the offense and Hawaii will send the punt team out to the field. Watching Barwin play he just it's amazing that a guy in one season can move from tight end to defensive end and get as many sacks as he's had this season. Never played the position before. Also three block kicks on the year. He is a do it all. Tim Grasso bunting and back deep is D'Angelo Smith. And Smith falls for the fair catch and he hauls it in just around the 10 yard line. So Connor Barwin, a good looking NFL prospect with a statement sack early on. Scoreless in paradise. Acura TL at the drive home for the holidays event. Celebrate the season with low finance and lease offers. Visit your Acura dealer or shop Acura.com. Let me upgrade And let me upgrade you to the best channels in HD. Only on Direct TV. Let me, let me, let me upgrade. Get the most TV for your money. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Phillips Norelco Architect. The shaver with a flexible head that pivots and rotates freely. So now you can easily get a close shave, even on the neck. Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore, Cincinnati number 13 in the country, won their first Big East title in just their fourth year in the conference. Tony Pike and the offense back out for the second time. And Pike with a completion out to the 20 yard line to Ben Godouli. Defensive impact players for Hawaii, Ella Mimian, the WAC co-defense player of the year, career tackle leader here in Hawaii, Adam Leonard, one of the really good underrated linebackers who will play on Sunday. This is an NFL kind of guy. David McKaney, 
Young man, really considered by his teammates and his coaches, the best player on defense this season. First down for Cincinnati. And Blake able to get it out to Marty Gilliard. And Gilliard with first down yardage for the Bearcats, again taken down by Jamil Dowling. A 13-yard pitch and catch. And once again, the big story for the Cincinnati offense early on here is the injury to Dominic Goodman. Took a big hit. On the sideline on the very first play of the game fell on that right shoulder went to the locker room to have it checked out. Inside carry now by Ramsey and Jacob Ramsey just keeps those legs going out to the 42 yard line for seven yards. David Vacuni defensive end with the tackle Rob's research this week here in the islands. Yeah it's tough to do it on the island but we got it done we'll talk about their offense. Hawaii likes to bring pressure they have to get big plays to get them out of it and then they have to run the ball to get at least about 100, 120 yards a game. Ramsey running well there for another first down. And Cincinnati making a little more of a commitment to the run here. Yeah, they, they have to run the ball enough to be able to throw the ball. And then defensively, they have to find a way to get pressure with their defensive linemen as they did on the opening drive when Barwin got that sack. So those are the three things we're kind of looking for tonight from Cincinnati. Five receivers, two by three. The dually, the tight ends, the man in motion for Pike. Flag is down as Pike is able to get it to Gilliard again. And look at the shifty moves. Ball is loose, and Hawaii jumps on it. Fumble recovery at the 40 yard line. And Desmond Thomas just scooped it up for the Warriors. Well, this might be a case of Gilliard trying to do a little bit too much. He knows that the offensive focus is on him now. We'll see what the flag is here. They're talking things over. Here's referee John McDade. There's a foul by each team on the play. Illegal formation on the offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Offsides defense lined up within the neutral zone. These fouls offset. Replay first down. Now the crowd here doesn't like the result of that. As Gilliard had fumbled it. As K.L. Monti. Came in, forced the fumble, was recovered by Desmond Thomas. But the penalties force a replay of the down. Well, it looks like you got lining up on the right side in the zone there. Head across the football. Gilliard is their speed receiver. As Brian Kelly has seen his possession man, Goodman, knocked out of the game. Ramsey again. And lots of running room for Jacob Ramsey. A flag comes in in the area of holding. As there's a fumble that's advanced forward. And sloppy play the past minute or so in this game. A ball on the turf. Penalty flags everywhere. Officials will clean this up. Hold. Number 56 off. Ten yard penalty. First down. Chris Jurek, the starting center for Cincinnati. It was a fine run by Ramsey, but it's coming back. Well, I think when you, you look at Cincinnati's offense with Goodman out, the impact of that is a lot more pressure. Take a look right here in the center. You'll see there's your, your hold on 56 Jurek in the middle. Trying to get a hold of Francis Maka. So it'll make for a first down and 20. Strange start to this game here with the 13th ranked team in the land, the Big East champs. And what many are saying is a game they have to really be careful of. You come out here to the warm weather in a bowl type atmosphere. Isaiah Peed. And Peed is a true freshman running back rod who they feel fits more in line with what this spread offense is. Well that's because they have a couple of guys that are really straight ahead runners and in, in uh, Gobo and Ramsey they, they run straight ahead but they're trying to run towards the sideline east and west. This guy on the other hand Pete is a guy who can get you big yardage. He can start running towards the sideline and cut it up the field. Receiver screen and good yardage for a first down to DJ Woods and Woods will 
We expect him to see more time with the injury to Goodman, and he gets into the mix often on those plays. Well, I think with Goodman out, Hawaii will be rolling most of their coverage and their focus to Gilliard, and that means somebody else has got to make a play. They hurry things up again in that spread offense, and Howard has it to the 35-yard line. Charlie Howard's a sophomore, big target at six foot three. Well, Cincinnati is, is controlling the pace of the game right now with not huddling and how quickly they snap the ball. Like now changing things up here. What, what this does is it allows them to keep Hawaii from blitzing them. They can see a blitz or they can hold it off by controlling the tempo. And he goes on the ground to Key. He tries to cut it back. Pick up of two yards there as Teed was taken down in the middle of that defense by Leonard. Yeah, I think if you're Hawaii defensively, you think in terms of making sure that you take Gilliard you know, out of the game, that you force Cincinnati to run the ball more than they normally do and force somebody else to catch passes now that Goodman's out of it. Now that would shorten things up for Coach McMacken in this game. That may be exactly what he wants to see here. Here's third down and three for the Warriors defense. Pike, a little sprint to the right, and that is complete, but it looks like it may be just short of the first down. It'll depend on the spot. As Marty Gilliard just set up shop at the line, but you see maybe just. Yeah, but this is this is a fourth down at the you're a half yard short or so. That's Solomon once again getting in there. I, I would think that he would probably go for it here, but he's That's sitting surprising. field goal team in. Huh. I, I'm surprised. I mean, you got a half yard to get. You're on the road in this ball game. I, I'd take the shot. So it'll be a 48 yard attempt for Jake Rogers. And now penalty marker comes in it looked like at the end of the right line well there's a delay of game as he stood up because of the play cock which is operating again that's just a frustrating series of events for coach Kelly well now you're looking at a 52 yard field goal so what would have been a very manageable fourth and short instead they trot out the place kicker Rogers and now they back him up even further. Yeah, that's a long one. 53 yards. Rogers from 53. And it is good. Plenty of leg on that one. His career long was 54. He just nailed it with ease from 53. So the big boot with the trade wins behind it. Jake Rogers puts the Bearcats up by three. My mother used to say, always keep your heart open. It's the only way to give and receive love. That's the inspiration behind my Open Hearts collection at Kay Jewelers. I worked with Kay because as the number one jewelry store in America, they've brought more hearts together than well, just about anyone. My wish is that my open heart design becomes a universal symbol of hope and love. Because if your heart is open, love will always find its way in. Find your perfect gift. Like the five-star crash safety rated Acura MDX at the drive home for the holidays event. Celebrate the season with low finance and lease offers. Visit your Acura dealer or shopacura.com. From the first Aquas LCD to the world's largest, Sharp has shaped the future of LCD technology, the Aquas Limited Edition Series. With a design so thin, a contrast ratio of over one million to one, and a picture so realistic, it will change the way you watch TV. The Aquas Limited Edition Series, part of Sharp's line of 120 hertz LCD TVs. Change your TV, change your life. Sharp. This place used to be filled with CDs and DVDs. 
Now it's all right in here, with room to spare. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, learn from the master. Good. That is fantastic. Yeah, you like that, huh? And I can take it all with me. <laughs> oh, yeah, hilarious. Now there's a 500 gig storage solution that docks and protects all your songs and videos. The new Free Agent Go from Seagate. ESPN's College Football is presented by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Welcome back to Aloha Stadium. The last game of the college football regular season. Number 13, Cincinnati, the Big East champs, facing a Hawaii team who's hungry for this one. You know, it's a Hawaii team, Rod. That lost as much as you could lose on the offensive side of the ball and on the coaching staff and had a fine year considering the circumstances. But this would be a nice way to cap things here playing a team that's going to the BCS and playing them hard right to the end. Yeah, they lost. They lost everything off of offense last year, including June Jones. Jake Rogers, who just hit the 53 yard field goal and the touchback for the Warriors. So let's check in with Wendy Nix. Good evening, Wendy. Hello, Joe. Greetings from Bristol, headquarters of the worldwide leader. Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship, in case there was any doubt. Moses Madu, 38 yards. He takes it right on in in this Taco Bell studio update. The final score, when all was said and done, 62 to 21. Oklahoma crushing Mizzou. Florida over Alabama, 31-20. Perhaps we have our BCS title matchup. Joe? We will find out tomorrow, but it seems like the FedEx BCS National Championship game will indeed be Florida and Oklahoma. Greg Alexander back to work now. And Alexander quickly gets it to Libre. And Libre with a good gain out to the 28. Let's look at the defensive impact players for the Bearcats, Rod. Well, Connor Barron announced himself on that first drive with the sack. He's a tremendous pass rusher, leading the Big East with sacks. And on the other end, Lamont Nelms is, an, is also an outstanding pass rusher. Not getting a start tonight for disciplinary reasons, but we'll see him at some point. And then Brandon Underwood, outstanding defensive back, moved from free safety to play the corner spot after Mike Mickens got hurt. Very versatile transfer from Ohio State. Nelms is back out there now as Alexander swings it out to Washington. First down yardage all the way out to the 37 yard line. Let's look at Rod's research for Hawaii. What you come up with in breaking them down? Well, you know, Hawaii is pretty, pretty unique. You always talk about winning the turnover battle. They are awful when they turn the football over. Some teams can overcome it. They really can't. And on offense, they need to get some big receiving games out of their two receivers, Washington and Lane. Defensively, it's all about stopping the wide receivers for Cincinnati, Gilliard and Goodman. And Goodman is already out of the ball game with an injury. Well, maybe a year ago with Colt Brennan, you could overcome those turnovers. But this is a different beast. Trying to find their identity offensively again. Libre again. A good surge out over the 45, taken down by Andre Rebels, a pickup of seven for Daniel Libre. You, you talk about the Hawaii offense and, and the turnovers, just, just terrible in that sense. They, their turnover margin is minus six, 115th in the country out of 119 teams. And when they win, they don't turn it over. But when they when they turn it over a lot, they lose. They turn it over four and five times a game. Alexander's done a better job of not turning the ball over as the season has gone on. Libre again with the carry, and he's going to be just about a yard short of the first down line to make. You, you mentioned Colt Brennan, and, and he could erase mistakes last season. And Colt Brennan didn't care about turnovers. He still made something happen. Now, look at this. In their wins, they are plus 13. In their losses, five losses, minus 19. That's almost four turnovers a game. That's not overcoming the problem. Well, how about this guy, Greg Alexander, Rod, who bounced back after starting the year on the road at Florida, had two interceptions against Florida. He's only thrown one the rest of the year. Third and one now. 
Libre is chased down right away by Connor Barwin and you see the explosive speed and his ability to get there for a TFL as Barwin does it again. Yeah keep in mind this guy was not a defensive lineman last year. He only started playing this spot in the spring and he's a guy that will play in the NFL because he's so quick so talented uses his hands well and now 14 and a half tackles for losses on the season leads the Big East with sacks he has 11 now on the year and he comes up big again for Cincinnati Grasso to punt and back deep is D'Angelo Smith he lets it bounce and it takes a Hawaii bounce look at this inside the five it keeps on going all the way down to the one yard line a 56 yard punt. Joe Pierre Davis downs it for the Warriors. That's why punt returners are taught to catch the ball in the air. Keep your offense from being backed up like this. Big boot by Grasso. Three zips, Cincinnati. Star Crash Safety Rated Acura MDX at the Drive Home for the Holidays event. Celebrate the season with low finance and lease offers. Visit your Acura dealer or shopacura.com. College football's heroes of the past welcome a new member to their exclusive club. Saturday, December 13th, one college football player will transcend greatness and become a legend. Will it be one of a trio of gifted Big 12 quarterbacks? Sam Bradford, Colt McCoy, or Graham Harrell, or will Florida's superhero retain his crown? The Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Nissan, December 13th at 8 on ESPN, followed by the greatest game ever played. The NBA season is here. You can get all the action and excitement with NBA League Pass. This is your complete season pass for only $189 for just four payments of $47.25 each. See the top stars and your favorite teams wherever you live on channel 751 through 768. Order now and get the best games, countless moments, and lasting memories. Get NBA League Pass from DirecTV now for just $189 or four payments of $47.25 each. To order, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or visit directtv.com. What'd you bring? Chicken a la vet. Ah, brownies a la supermarket. Oh, ladies. Dad is still sneaking around the cable. I knew it. How could she do that to us? Well, it ends tonight. I brought DirecTV's refer a friend offer. She deserves the best and all her favorite shows in HD. Now she can finally dump cable. Yes. Yeah. Friends don't let friends watch cable. Refer a friend or family member to DirecTV, and you'll get $50, and they'll get $50, on top of our best offer. Now oh, the fire dance of the islands. One of the most festive places to come for college football. Cincinnati has made their way here for the 13th game of the year and a very interesting atmosphere Rob that a lot of teams could get caught up in. It is not an easy place to come and focus on football. From their own end zone and that is out complete to Marcus Burnett. So a little breathing room for Cincinnati. Now get your weekly dose of NFL news and analysis Sunday on ESPN first at 11 a.m. Eastern. Boomer hosts Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM. Then at 7 Eastern, Chris Berman and John Saunders deliver the day's highlights and scores during Sports Center Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM. Sports Center presented by Bud Light Sunday on ESPN. So a second and four now, and Pike to pass again. And he's looking for his tight end and has his target for a first down to Ben Gadouli. Gadouli, the younger brother of Gino, who was the four year starter. And that quarterback. Yeah, very fine quarterback at Cincinnati. Hey, watch the end of the play. Does he make the catch and stay in bounds with this? He's still juggling it. Yeah, he was it. juggling it. Didn't have control of it. At least that's what the official rule, I believe. So they do. Yeah. They bring it back. That's, and they're that's gonna call right call. third down. That's the right call. And that ball was slipping down from his hands to his knees. And this atmosphere is getting loud. I, 
I want to get back to our point about how tough it is to play here after this play. A little different than it is on the beach, where Cincinnati has spent the past few days. Charge timeout. Cincinnati, their first of the half. Well, Coach Brian Kelly said to us, you worry sometimes. It will be a 30-second timeout. You come out here to Hawaii, you hit the fun in the sun, and then, oh, by the way, there's a football game to play, Rob. Well, his players were staying in a hotel you know, on the beach. I mean, literally walk out of the hotel and you're on the beach as you take a look at the difference in temperatures back in Cincinnati and here. So you worry about your players being on their feet in the sun and doing all the vacation sightseeing things like going to Pearl Harbor and whatnot. And you worry about them losing their legs when they come to play because it's like being on a vacation. And even when you get to the stadium, some of that psychological and atmosphere warfare continues because we heard the Cincinnati players saying, hey, I know what they're doing in pregame warm-ups. They're playing some Bob Marley. <laughs> trying to make things cool and easy and yeah. let us hang loose. Yeah. And yeah. forget that we're playing a hard-nosed college football game. Yeah. And you know, the same thing happens not only coming here, and I have that experience, but when you go, when you go to a bowl game, bowl atmosphere, it's hard to focus because you want to enjoy yourself. And I think Cincinnati's had to deal with that this week. Third and three. Pike to pass. And he has it complete to Marty Gilliard. And Gilliard has a first down, a seven yard gain. He was taken down, covered by Calvin Roberts. And then there are guys like Gilliard, stone cold player. Doesn't matter if he's in Cincinnati or out here on the island, he's coming to play. And he knows that the offense revolves around him now, particularly with Goodman out. And he's getting a lot of attention out there. And he still beats the coverage. Mike now sprinting. On first down, and that's incomplete. It was intended for Gilliard. And Gilliard's going to get a few extra looks with the injury to Dominic Goodman that we saw. You see the big, gaudy numbers on Gilliard. There's a flag down on this play. Well, he's not only a great receiver, he is an outstanding kick returner. Personal foul, hand, prolonged hands to the face mask, number 93 on the defense. A 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. That's Kayala Watson, the defensive tackle for Hawaii. Coach McMacken, who was a defensive coordinator under June Jones. And there's Watson, who McMacken describes as a very good leader, but a costly penalty there. Well, he made second team all whack this season and has really played played well the last half of the season in particular. If this defense you know, really kind of came alive as it realized they had to help out the offense until the offense got seven. So first and ten from the 31. Pike runs it himself. And Pike has that long stride, but he is taken down right in the gut by Desmond Thomas. Seven yard run from Tony Pike. Yeah, you, you know, you don't expect your spread offense quarterback to be 6'6, six, six, you know, and have a, a loping stride like this, but but he's been running this offense and running it well this season. Not your prototypical spread quarterback. Desmond Thomas seeing a lot of time with the injury to Ryan Mouton. And a run for a first down here is John Goble. Hawaii defense. And this is Mutat, first team all whack, free safety. Yeah, he's he's an outstanding player. Bad ankle. They'll have him back more than likely for, uh, for their bowl game here. There's Mutat. You see limited action tonight. Final seconds of the first quarter here. That and they'll let it run down. Quarter. So a little choppy and sloppy from both offenses. A 53 yard field goal. The difference so far. Number 13 headed to the FedEx Orange Bowl, but a tough test tonight at Hawaii. The Buccaneers take on the Panthers at 8.30 on ESPN Monday Night Football.
Taco Bell's new fully loaded nachos. With more seasoned beef and nacho cheese sauce, it has way more toppings than chips. So they're loaded to the last chip. He's a watchful protector. This is the hero Gotham deserves. A dark night. Dark Knight, by Tuesday on Blu-ray and DVD. Personalize your holiday shopping with Skinit.com. It's the perfect gift for the number one sports fan on your shopping list. Go to Skinit.com today. Create customized holiday gifts online. Anything you can imagine to personalize your device. Laptops, cell phones, MP3 players, gaming devices, any device, anytime. Or get a Skinit pin card so they can pick their own design. Choose from sports, entertainment, fashion, and more. To get free shipping, use promo code OFFER03. Go to skinit.com slash OFFER03 today. Black hot half cup of coffee, please. Excuse me? Can I get a black coffee? Black coffee. I know, thank you. Where to go? Feed you more legs, please. What? We got a few more legs, please. English. Got it. How does that make you feel? Oh, they say it was bollocks. What? That's disturbing, Ozzy. Make yourself heard with the full QWERTY keyboard Samsung Propel. Are you about to lose your home? Are you behind on your mortgage? Are your payments too high? You could stay in your home with lower payments. I did. The government is not going to bail you out. Don't allow them to take your home. One phone call could make the difference. You talked about saving your home. Call Federal Loan Modification at 1-877-39-HOUSE now or log on to fedmod.com. Again, that number is 877-39-HOUSE. The most important call you'll ever make. An important spare here for the reigning champ. And this tournament is up for grabs. A little chill time for Sean Rash before he throws. <clears throat> The fans sure do eat him up. 50 years and still rolling strong. Watch the Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour Sunday at 1 p.m. on ESPN. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by K Jewelers. Glad you're with us, Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore. Why looking for some respect? Here against the 13th ranked team in the land, Cincinnati, with a 10 win season and a trip to the FedEx Orange Bowl. Being held to three points in that first quarter. Noble now testing that left side, puts down his head and charges forward out to the 47. Well, last week, since he was hosting Syracuse, because of what happened the day before, they knew they already had clinched the Big East Championship. Tony Pike threw for 270 yards, two touchdowns, came in the second half. They beat up the Orange 30 to 10 and locked up outright their first ever Big East title and assured them an appearance in a BCS Bowl, which will be announced tomorrow as the Orange Bowl and a date with Virginia Tech. The ACC champs. Pike, five receivers on second down and gets it to Gilliard. And Gilliard able to scoot free down to the 42. Well, you know, it makes you wonder, you talk about Big East Championship, how good is the Cincinnati team? And Kelly's done a tremendous job with them in only two seasons. And when we talked to him yesterday, he made the point that part of the reason was that Mark D'Antoni Antonio left him a good squad before going on to Michigan State. Says that was one of the keys. Here's Goble again. And he was upended at the 40 yard line as Jameel Dowling came in for his second tackle of the game. You know, Kelly made a very interesting point saying, hey, I'll, I'm honest with recruits when I say, why come here? 
because you can win right away in this conference. Yeah. This yeah. is a conference where you can just you can get to the BCS without having to play. He said flat out without having to play the Oklahoma. Yeah. And Texas. And, yeah. No championship game. And he said he looked out and saw you know there are a couple games you got to win. Had to beat West Virginia and they got that squared away and all of a sudden you can win the conference and they did. And ahead of schedule. Well ahead of schedule. And he said the administration found out about that this week when he met with them. And that is picked off. So Pike makes a mistake. And Keo Monte comes up with the interception. Well, it's just a bad throw. He overshoots his man. Just inaccuracy here. And he just tries to get his guy, and Keo Monte was sitting back deep in the zone and got the overthrow. Now it's either an overthrow or his receiver doesn't go all the way across. Look at where it is. He's trying to go right here with that ball. That ball is here, and the defensive back, Keo Monte, is there, and you got a pick. Overthrown, high, inside, and that was 85, Marcus Barnett, who was trying to come across the middle. So the Warriors back to business. Alexander to Washington. Washington with a little spin move and then is forced out of bounds just short of the 35. Cedric Tolbert with the play defensively for the Bearcats. Now to go back to Brian Kelly for a second. You know, we talked about his taking control of the Big East this last season, two consecutive 10 win seasons. And keep in mind, he became a hot property and, and won the Big East in two years. And they had a five year plan. So the university said, oops, we weren't quite prepared for this, and he's a hot commodity. A lot of other places looking at him for a head coaching job, and he said, I'll stay, but you got to take care of facilities here. And he said that he got a firm commitment from the administration. He feels really good about the upside. Now on a screen and cutting back into the middle and out to the 38-yard line was Malcolm Lane. And Malcolm is the kind of player that Greg Alexander says, you know, he's the guy that stays with me after practice to get in the extra work. Yeah. Well, you need that. Most quarterbacks demand that of their receivers. So it'll make for a third down and four for Alexander. Three by two is the set. Line to make is the 43. Three step and a first down to Bain. Aaron Bain, who sat behind great slot receivers here the past few years, now getting his opportunity. Well, you know, this play, they attack the flat. This is a great example of what they do in the run and shoot. What they do is they are attacking the flat area with this man here, running everybody else off to create space over here for your inside receiver. When they set three receivers to that side, they get to the flat area. They put a lot of pressure on you, and that's a play that works an awful lot. Brandon Underwood on the tackle. How about Greg Alexander starting the game 7 of 7 for 49 yards? Here he is with time, and that was a dangerous, dangerous pass for Salas. As Brandon Underwood. Yeah, well, you see the one on one. Isolation here, Underwood in great coverage. That drives on this thing. That ball was thrown behind him. And sometimes a young quarterback can get too aggressive. Alexander throwing across the field late. The young quarterbacks have to figure out the hard way that you can't do that too often and get away with it. So first incompletion for Alexander. Rush off the edge against Alexander, and he is taken down again. So it'll bring up a third and long as they brought some pressure, and Alexander collapsed there as Corey Smith came charging in from that outside linebacker spot. Well, keep in mind that this is Alexander's first year starting as a quarterback in major college. He's a junior college transfer, was not heavily recruited. And he started the first game of the season and then sat on the bench for almost two months. So he doesn't have a lot of experience at this level, quarterback. Offensive coordinator Ron Lee was just puzzled by how under recruited Alexander was. Third and 13, over the middle, threw it behind his intended target, 
and incomplete. He was trying to get it to Michael Washington. There was a little window of opportunity, but unable to connect. Yeah, you know, you, you watch him, and he's a big, strong guy. You know, 6'3, 235, 240, strong arm. You know, he moves well, and you wonder how did he kind of go unnoticed? In junior college, some folks thought maybe it was a little too stiff, needed some work, but he's a prospect. Grasso, who had a 56 yard punt last time out, back out there. And DJ Woods is setting up shop at the 10 yard line as this goes out of bounds. Grasso now questioning the mark of the officials. As Cincinnati will be back on offense with Tony Pike and Marty Gilliard when we return to Aloha Stadium. They're up a field goal. Is the new fuel injected Yamaha Rhino 700 the world's most reliable workhorse or the ultimate off road explorer? Yes. Yamaha Rhino 700 FI. No matter how you slice it, it's the ultimate side by side. For a limited time, get up to $300 customer cash and low financing on a new Rhino. Discipline investing. At T. Rowe Price, it's not just about the short term, it's about a steady, long term approach. For each three, five, and 10 year period, over 75% of our mutual funds beat their Lipper average. Low cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. LT is fast, very fast. Fortunately, the pixels you're watching are fast too. They're refreshing at a rate of 120 hertz, twice the speed of most HD TVs. So while he may look like a blur to the guys on defense, every frame on a Vizio is crisp and clear. Introducing the new XVT series. Powerful technology from Vizio. Hi, I'm 10.2 miles past Route 4 and I need some help. The Help Me feature, only from TomTom. Tom. Go confidently. This holiday season, when you give the gift of a TomTom Tom GPS, you can save up to $100. So go with a TomTom. Tom. It's easy to use, and right now, it's even easier to give. Yes, we know we're alive. And we can wonder why. We know we're not perfect, and we can laugh at our mistakes. When life overwhelms us, we can cry, and we can move mountains, if we only try. And we invite you to help us beat cancer and donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Call 1 800 4 Jimmy B or log on to jimmyv.org. 100% of all the donations go towards cancer research. In fact, Coach Brian Kelly put $50,000 towards cancer research at Cincinnati. His wife, Pokey, has battled breast cancer and it's very much on his mind. And Dustin Grutza in at quarterback now for the Bearcats as he gives the ball to Isaiah Peed and Peed with a fine run of nine yards there. There's Dustin Grutza, the senior who started the season as a starting quarterback and broke his leg in the second week of the season against Oklahoma and uh, was out for quite some time and has been a very good reliable backup since coming back and isn't quite 100 percent but is getting some playing time. This was expected. Now Pete's run there marked for a first down so a gain of 10 there by Pete. And he gets the call again. And he's out to pass the 33 yard line. And he's a good looking true freshman is Pete. Went to the same high school as Archie Griffin and broke all his records. That same something. He's more academy back in Columbus Ohio. And he is definitely the future in the backfield for Cincinnati. Now, 
out of the gun. Here on second down. Pete once again, big sweeping move to the top. And it'll be a yard short of the first down, taken down by Solomon Elamimian. You can see why Pete is the future. And there is Pike on the sideline, all six foot six inches of him. Through that one pick and he came out of the ball game. It just so happened that he he threw it at uh, the inappropriate time. It was predetermined he was going to be coming out of the ball game. I'm sure he's frustrated that he's not in there right now. No one wants to come out after a bad play. No, you want to go out there and make up for it. So here's third and two. He has the first down and gets loose. And here goes Isaiah P. All the way down to the 24 yard line. Jamil Dowling finally took him down. A 36 yard run by Pete. Well, he's an elusive guy, great speed. He, he has the ability to make the plays, as you saw on this one. This is just an inside zone. He makes the right cut, finds the hole, and watch him break a couple of tackles as he comes off it. Gets hit there, keeps his balance, and now he finishes the run, lowers his shoulder at the end of it. Doesn't go down easily. You can see why they're really high on him, and he's going to touch the ball an awful lot tonight, and more than likely in the bowl game as well. Roots it's a pass here on first down. It's off the hands of Goduli. Ben Goduli in Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Has 17 catches on the year. Dustin Grutza getting playing time here after the interception by Pike in a pre planned move. Coach Kelly said he would get some time. Second and ten. Goble now. Not much running room into the middle of that Hawaii defense as Dowling came up and made the tackle. Yeah, well, this is working for Cincinnati. They, they're not a big run team. Yet they're having success against a Hawaii team that has not been great against the run. Ranked number 73 in the country at 150 yards a game. Five receivers for Grutza on third and nine. Pressure right up the middle. And now Grutza just throws it away. So after giving up. The big run to Isaiah P. The Hawaii defense holds. Well, that's a veteran move, though, by Grutza. He got a lot of pressure from Joshua Leonard and Adam Adam Leonard. Both of them in there, but throwing that ball away preserved the opportunity to try a field goal. And that big leg of Jake Rogers comes back out. Went from 53 the first time out there tonight. Oh, could have been from 60. And now this from 40. And it's blocked. And now picked up and returned. And with blockers in front. All the way to midfield. So a heads up play by Solomon Elamimian. A 39 yard return. While everyone else was standing around, the senior, Elaminian, raced over and picked up the ball. Now, watch the end of the play here. Everyone else kind of looking around. He goes over and grabs it. And off he goes to the races. You know, Rod, he took one look up, and I think he saw that. Most everybody had given up on the plate. Yep. He took one little glance up and said, you know what? I'm going to make something out of this. That's a veteran move. So good momentum changer for Hawaii. Alexander now. Oh, and he's stripped of the ball. He was winding up trying to go deep, and instead he was stripped of the ball. Now, I thought that was a great play Cincinnati by Cincinnati ball. Elliot Purcell, I thought, came around. Lamont Nelms is coming around. And when the quarterback is in the motion of throwing, 
if the hand comes forward at all it's an incomplete pass but I didn't think the hand came forward. I thought that ball was knocked out before he started a forward motion. Terrell Bird coming up in the bottom of that pile as Nelms was the one who was the playmaker. Watch here. Swipes it away. Bearcats jump on it. Their ball when we return. This year, a Radio Shack associate suggested a GPS receiver for my husband. Later, the kids tried to find Santa with it. And amazingly, it took us to this small town where we found a great little diner. Wasn't Christmas fun? Yeah. Hot chocolate, kids. The kids will never forget it. And it all began with the help I got at Radio Shack. Everything worth listening to is now on Sirius. Right now, add the best of XM to your Sirius subscription at Radio Shack. Rated T for Team. Tonight's tag team partners, Triple H and John Cena. The Big Show, Hornswoggle. Seriously? I can't decide. Create the ultimate tag team in SmackDown vs. Raw. Introducing all new tag team gameplay with high impact moves and finishers. WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2009. Alone, you're great. Together, you're unstoppable. Whoa, we're good. This works. No matter where you live, NHL Center Ice on DirecTV makes every game a home game. It's hockey like you've never seen it before. Up to 40 games a week of intense NHL action with more games than ever in crystal clear HD. Follow your favorite teams and your favorite players. Just four payments of $42.25. NHL Center Ice on DirecTV. To order, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or visit directtv.com slash NHL today. If he comes up for air, we'll be waiting. And when he slips up, we'll be ready. I've been alone for a long time. I have to be. As far as I'm concerned, that man's whole body is property of the U.S. Army. An ordinary man. What is it like when it happens? Will become. It's very dangerous to be around me. Incredible. The Incredible Hulk. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Radio Shack. Get the most from your electronics at Radio Shack, where you don't just buy stuff, you do stuff. Back-to-back -back turnovers here at Aloha Stadium. Alongside Rod Gilmore, I'm Joe Tessitore. And Lamont Nelms just forcing a fumble after we saw the blocked field goal return 39 yards. And now Tony Pike back in for Cincy, and here's Gilliard. And the speedy, dangerous weapon downfield inside the 20. Desmond Thomas was defending a 29-yard reception for Gilliard. Well, that was set up by this great play by Lamont Nelms. Watch what he does to Latule, the guard there. Engages, throws him away, and then gets up there. And look at that job. Nice job with the right hand, knocking the ball down clearly before Alexander is able to start his forward motion throwing the ball. So now Cincinnati... Back where they were moments ago after that sequence of ping pong turnovers. Goble. And Goble pushing ahead down to the 11 yard line, eight yard gain for the sophomore from Michigan. Well, the thing that's working for Cincinnati is that they're able to run the ball. And once they lost Goodman, it seemed that the focus would go to Gilliard, and it has, but it's opened up the running game. For Cincinnati, they don't normally run the ball this well. It forced their hand, and it's working out well. Global now, right at that first down line, as Ella Mimian got to him. He is the WAC co-defensive player of the year, school record for tackles. And he brings it. Well, he's got great lateral movement, and he attacks. Now you see how he found that thing and just really attacked it. You know, was seeking it out, saw it clearly, read it, and then boom, exploded right into the ball carrier. So it'll make for a third and short. Two for five on third downs are the Bearcats. And Goble is right at that line. It'll depend on the spot as he tries to push the ball forward. 
And it looks like the mark will be right there. It's John McDade and company. We're going to take a look at this spot. Coach Brian Kelly. It's a very, uh, very confident coach, but a good guy, you know. We enjoyed chatting with him the other day. And you know, we talked over first down there scenarios about what Hawaii could do. He said, you know something? We got it. We got some answers. We got answers if they do this. We got answers if they do that. I think we're pretty prepared. Said this week, there's no reason to listen to other job offers. He heard the plans to improve Cincinnati's stadium and practice facilities and very upbeat after the meeting with the school president and athletic director. But he was one of those names talked about for the Tennessee job. And he was the guy that people were focusing in on. Yeah, he'll he'll on be the Charlie Weiss front. Exactly. When they were talking about Notre Dame replacement. He'll be talked about next year as well. So a first and goal for Pike. He has time. And Pike is able to complete it to Charlie Howard. Good coverage by Jameel Dowling in his fifth tackle of the game. Well, they're being smart, too. They know that. Gilliard is drawing a lot of attention and Gilliard is not going to be the guy one would think who would get loose down here in the red zone inside the 20 here. It's going to be somebody else who has to get free to catch the ball because that guy number one should get a lot of attention down here. The reason for that is that number 16 isn't in the game. Dominic Goodman left on the first series with a separated shoulders report that we're getting. Goble now big hole on the left side and he's down inside the two yard line. As Desmond Thomas was able to get to him. Yeah, you know, you only have 11 guys on defense. And when you start double covering or moving a couple of guys, that leaves you with fewer guys inside to stop the run. And just a hurry up, quick snap there as Pike tried to do it himself and got absolutely nowhere as Adam Leonard, the fine linebacker, made a heads up play. Yeah, Leonard's really underrated. Made all whack this year, but really isn't that well known outside of you know, the whack conference. But he's a guy that will play in the NFL as well. Most people think he's somewhere around a third or fourth round pick, likely to do very well in the league. So they tried to catch him off guard, just running up to the line of scrimmage, and Hawaii's defense does it again. So Jake Rogers back on to attempt the 20 yarder. His last field goal attempt was blocked. And this time, he's able to get it up and good. So a six zip lead for Cincy. Flag down here. Wow. Another personal foul against Cincinnati. Kelly's saying, if it's against them, I want the first down. Personal foul, number 80 on the defense, leaping and landing on a player. Half the distance to the goal line, automatic first down. Antoine Mahali, the yeah. defensive lineman for Hawaii, after the Hawaii defense had shut down Cincinnati down on the goal line, now another chance for the Bearcats. Well, it's a safety issue. You're not supposed to leap on anyone. You have to go straight up and down. You can't take a step and leap. It's a safety issue. You can't take a step and leap. They're concerned about guys falling down, hurting themselves, or hurting someone else that they land on. So the whole idea is that you simply jump straight up. You can't even take a step. So right back at it is the Cincy offense. Power backfield with the eye, and Pike is going to throw, and Pike has a touchdown. And he's able to connect with D.J. Woods with a second chance opportunity. And the true freshman from Strongsville, Ohio, scores Cincy's first touchdown of the night. Now this looks like it's Ferguson out of the backfield and just the fullback, you know, getting out in the flat. And he's wide open for it. Oh, excuse me. That was Delbert Ferguson who came in defensively. Number three on offense is Woods who's very active in this offense but they snuck in Ferguson. So the linebacker comes in plays a little offense. 
and scores the touchdown for Cincy. How about that? Sharing the wealth. Ferguson scores from Pike. Honey, I found the perfect tree. Really? What makes it perfect? It comes with a present. Like her, only gold is treasured. So this Christmas, thank her for choosing you with a gift of gold from Kay. That's just one more reason Kay is the number one jewelry store in America. This the one, ma'am? Yes. This is the one. Every kiss begins with Kay. Ruby Tuesday's handcrafted minis are bold on flavor and big on taste. Beef, turkey, and crab cake minis. Our new mini trio, 25 great burgers with endless fries starting at $5.99. The new Ruby Tuesday, so good, it's guaranteed. The hotter the hot, the colder the cold, the greater the demand, the more you need Duralast. Batteries built to exceed the need. Only at AutoZone. From the first Aquas LCD to the world's largest, Sharp has shaped the future of LCD technology, the Aquas Limited Edition Series, with a design so thin, a contrast ratio of over one million to one, and a picture so realistic, it will change the way you watch TV. The Aquas Limited Edition Series, part of Sharp's line of 120 hertz LCD TVs. Change your TV, change your life. Sharp. Delbert Ferguson celebrating the touchdown here in Hawaii. Monday Night Football, two nine and three teams. Tampa and Carolina hooking up. Monday Night Football at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown delivered by UBS. So Delbert Ferguson, who there's two number threes on Cincinnati. He's listed as a linebacker and a fullback. Does not have an offensive stat on the entire season. And here in game number 13 in here, comes up with a big one. Reward for great blocking during the season. Jake Rogers kicking deep. Malcolm Lane on the return. And Lane struggling to fight out for yardage. And a flag comes in late as he's taken down at the nine yard line. During the return, like a block in the back. Number 31, receiving team. Phillies have to distance to the goal line. First down, Hawaii. Let's go back to the touchdown pass to Ferguson. You can see how difficult this is. He is in the fullback spot, and now he comes out, and you're thinking, okay, he's going to block. No, he's going to slip on into the flat where the ball is just thrown him in nice and easily by Pike. That's a hard play to defend. You think the fullback is going to block, and all of a sudden, He's all alone in the end zone. Got to feel great for the senior. His first offensive stat of the year, and it comes that way. And now with the penalty, Hawaii in a hole here. Alexander stretched out across his own goal line and goes with the screen pass. Wrapped up his lead ray, but pushes it all the way out. Close to first down yardage. As he just was carrying Terrell Bird and others. How does he do that? Hey, he's not a big guy. Yeah, he goes 5'8", about buck 85. Yeah. Hey, he carried a couple of guys. And he moves the chain. I mean, watch him here. Hey, small guy. But just keeps on churning, moving those legs, and he's carrying a big old guy, Bird, who's about 290 pounds. Are you kidding me? Great effort by Libre. 
three by one receivers for Alexander has time and he connects with Washington and Washington with another first down for Hawaii. You know Hawaii has had some opportunities but penalties have hurt them. Alexander's looked good back there most of the time with his with his accuracy but they just haven't been able to stream together three or four good plays without a penalty or a sack. Libre stays in here flanking Alexander three by one's the formation. Alexander a quick little throw and that's a loss of yardage there as Bain was unable to get much of anything and as Tolbert came up and made a good looking play from that free safety position. Cedric Tolbert never started until this year but he's done a very good job for defensive coordinator Joe Tracy. Well, that defense had 10 senior starters and a lot of those guys this is their first season starting and normally you think guys who are first year starters as seniors really aren't that good. That's not true. These guys are good and experienced. Alexander taking a lot of time. Pump fakes and able to pick up a few yards there. And coming up on the college football halftime report we'll visit with Wendy Nix and Jesse Palmer and Oklahoma. What a night for them. Tim Tebow. Of course, putting forth an SEC title for the Gators, and we'll get you ready for all the bowls that are going to be announced on Sunday. Some good matchups that we're going to see. The FedEx BCS National Title Game looks like it's going to be Florida and Oklahoma. And the FedEx Orange Bowl will include these Cincinnati Bearcats against the ACC champs, Virginia Tech. Third and four now for Hawaii. Libre with blockers in front. A first down and plenty more as Libre's out to the 47 taken down by Corey Smith 13 yard gain. Well, the screen pass has been the play that they've used on this drive and it's really it's really worked for them. Now they go hurry up. Hurry up offense. Under a minute to go for Alexander. Libre in the slot so five receivers they're only bringing three and able to get pressure with three but Alexander scoots ahead to the 45 and the clock continues to run out of burn a timeout charge timeout Hawaii that's their first charge timeout of the half so Alexander has the offense moving a little bit here with 37 30 seconds second to go. Timeout. Very busy day of action. This wrapping up a championship Saturday. And here are the projected bowl matchups, Rod. Hey, you see Oklahoma likely to play Florida. Cincinnati, Virginia Tech, we've talked about in the FedEx Orange Bowl. The All-State Sugar Bowl, Alabama, and Utah more than likely. And the Rose Bowl, presented by Citigroup. A traditional matchup, Big Ten, Pac-10, Penn State, USC. And then the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, Texas, not Boise State, more than likely Ohio State. Getting that last at large. And let's look at how Cincinnati's upcoming opponent advanced themselves. Virginia Tech taking on Boston College in Tampa for the ACC title. And Hokie quarterback Tyrod Taylor, he had himself a very good day today. Frank Beamer, Virginia Tech, avenging a regular season loss to BC for the second year in a row beating them in the ACC title game. 30 to 12 the victory, and they're headed to the FedEx Orange Bowl. Kind of painful for you, huh? SBC guy. Well, a pretty good season for the Eagles. They weren't expected to do a heck of a lot without Matty Ryan leaving for the NFL. Here's Salas now. And he's inside the 30 to the 25 and under 30 seconds to go and a 20-yard gain. And here come the Warriors now. Well, manage the clock effectively. The clock will stop now. Second charge time out of the half. Hawaii. Yeah, see, I think they could have got a playoff. It will be a 30-second timeout. You know, because the clock would stop to mark the first down, rush up to the line of scrimmage, get something done, save that timeout, but they would chose to go with it instead. 25-yard line now, and again, spreading them out. They've done a good job. Screen passes here have worked for them. You might have time to stick with that now instead of forcing yourself to take a shot at the end zone. Well, we gave you a preview moments ago what the BCS Bowls are going to look like, and to get a look at all 34 bowl games, you can join Reese Davis, Herbie, Coach Holtz, Lee Corso, Mark May. It's the Bowl Selection Special Sunday night at 8 Eastern on ESPN. I'm very much looking forward 
to hearing from the guys on all 34 bowl games. Absolutely. Some really good looking matchups potentially from what we're hearing, Rod. Yeah. Although I, I gotta tell you, I'm disappointed for the Big 12's finish. You know, after a great year to end up with the championship game like they had today and the controversy with Oklahoma over Texas, not, not a great way for the Big 12 to end the year. Greg Alexander, 12 of 14, 105 yards, 28 seconds to go here. Trying to get on the board. And it looked like the left tackle had some motion. Full start, number 77 offense. Five yard penalty, first down. And that is big Aaron Kia. Yeah, see, you know, you can't have that out of a timeout. That's essentially a waste of your timeout when you come out and you have a setback like that. With the game clock operator, please put 28 seconds on the clock. 28. Yeah, I still think they can run the screen pass down here. They still have enough time to do something with that. And you want to come away with points. So you can't Thank get pushed back. You don't want to sack or anything. Cincinnati hasn't stopped the screen pass yet. John Medeiros in as a slot receiver here with five fly for Hawaii. Alexander, and he looks his way. Wow. Down to the 10-yard line. Wow. That was a throw. That was a big-time throw. Watch the accuracy here. Look at this thing. He sticks it in between three defenders. That is big time. And now Alexander hurrying up to the line of scrimmage, and he'll spike the ball with 18 seconds to go here. 17 seconds now. In the first half. I like it. You got 17 seconds. You still have one more timeout. So you can stop the clock. You don't have to work the sidelines. Let's go back to that throw. Look at this thing. That's beautiful. In between three defenders. John Medeiros, the junior from the play right here clock in Oahu. The did not start at 40 seconds. However, we had a stop game clock. Therefore, set the play clock to 25 seconds, please. Just a tough-nosed wide receiver, local kid who played some quarterback in high school, and has come here and contributed as a receiver for the Warriors. So now 17 seconds to go. They don't have to work the sideline here. They can still work the middle. They can still run screen pass. One timeout for Hawaii. And as Alexander, you kind of see him growing up as this season has continued on. Whistle comes in. The 25 second clock was not moving, not working. I don't know if that's the, the call, but it wasn't moving. The play clock did not start. With the game clock operator, please put 17 seconds on the game clock and reset the play clock to 25 seconds. Is it me or are you starting to get a little disdain and frustration in the voice of John McDay and the referee with all the issues with the clock tonight? Yeah, next time he's going to say, do I have to come up there and do it myself? I got to slap somebody around up there? Let's get this thing straightened out. Uh, it's moving now. Okay. So second down. By the way, they can make a first down here inside the one. Three by two for Alexander. Lost it to the corner of the end zone, but that is well overthrown as Michael Washington was breaking to the corner, covered by Brad Jones. 15 seconds remaining in third down. Well, they still have a timeout. So you don't have to force it into the end zone. You don't have to work the sideline. You can take a shot with something inside, and if you don't get in the end zone, you don't get the first down, you can still stop the clock and kick a field goal and get some points out The previous out of play started with 17 seconds on the game clock. There was four seconds run during the play. Please put 13 seconds on the game clock. That's it. It's <laughs> done. That's it. He's had it. He's had enough. <laughs> the next time he opens up that microphone, he's going to say, fine, I'll do it myself. <laughs> Thank you. So now third down with 13 seconds remaining in the half. Lane split well to the top side. Alexander looking to the middle as you said they could but it falls incomplete. 
as Bain had his man to the inside, Ryan Manilak. Yeah, yeah, good call, but a better play by Manilak. Yeah, Manilak's a linebacker, and he plays this very well inside. Look at him. Stretches around with the left hand. Does a nice job. That is a good play. Now the fans are calling for pass interference because he had a right hand on him, and then there was a late hit on Alexander. But Manilak made a very good play in the secondary. So the guy they call the Iceman comes on, Dan Kelly. 29 yard attempt. And he puts it up and through. So it was a very good drive by Greg Alexander as Hawaii gets on the board. That was big. They needed something going into halftime, a little momentum. They got something out of that drive. Three points really count. And now you're back to a one possession game. And you can go in the locker room saying, okay, we've kind of figured out some things that will work on the Cincinnati defense. That drive, they got a lot done with their screen pass. This first half has had absolutely no rhythm to it. For either team. For either team. It has been choppy. It has been sloppy. We've seen what's happened with the play clock, with the game clock. Lots of penalties. We had turnovers going back and forth. There just hasn't been a rhythm to it. Yeah. And then right there at the end, you got a sense that both teams kind of found yeah. themselves a little bit with those last two scoring well, drives. But if you're a Cincinnati fan, you have to be concerned about the second half. And did your team spend too much time this week in the sun, on the beach, out and about, and will it show up in the second half? In the heat, on the sand, get those beach legs oh. and that mentality, and you start Breathing a little deeper in the second half, and you ask yourself some tough questions as to how much you can give, and we will find out how much Cincinnati has in the tank. They are being tested tonight, undoubtedly. You know, a lot of coaches do not stay in Waikiki Beach when they come down here with their teams. A lot of them move away so that the players aren't in and around that tourist environment. You ran into a very good football mind here I, in I Hawaii ran. who was surprised Cincinnati was there. A number of coaches were here recruiting because the Hawaii State High School Championship games were here yesterday. A lot of coaches were around. I ran into uh, a couple of guys, and they were surprised that Cincinnati was staying in Waikiki. And a squib kick here will be fielded by the Bearcats. And that'll leave double zeros on the clock here as Isaiah Pede closes it out that is the with end the of return the there. So Cincinnati scored first. Hawaii scores last and number 13 only up a touchdown 10 3 here closing out their regular season before a visit to the FedEx Orange Bowl when we return Wendy Nix and Jesse Palmer will join you from the studio for the college football halftime report. It was right before Christmas. I did a consultation for a guy who was legally blind. He's been living in the house so long, he knows the house in and out. So he kind of memorized the walls and where he wanted the TV. He also had a three-year-old son who ran around the house who liked to play hide and go seek. Finding him sometimes is really hard because he's really short and he's quick. When we were done, we had to teach him how to use uh, about four different remotes to touch. We had to count the buttons from the bottom. We got it done for him. He was really happy though. He couldn't stop thanking us. His name was Charles actually. Charles, I wish you a Merry Christmas. Everybody's seen the Boise State, Oklahoma last second come from behind Statue of Liberty highlight films. And most know about Heisman finalist Colt Brennan's 58 touchdowns and 5,500 yards passing. They know Hawaii was the second WAC team in as many years to play in a BCS bowl game. Kind of makes you wonder what we'll do for an encore. The Western Athletic Conference. Play up. Enjoy the most college hoops in the nation from ESPN Full Court on DirecTV. Key matchups with some of college basketball's top conferences and up to 30 games per week from outside your local area. Order the regular season package. Only two payments of $54.50 each. That's right, just $54.50 each. Call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or log on to directtv.com slash full court. ESPN Full Court on DirecTV. No matter where you live, you've got a front row seat to your yeah. favorite team with NHL Center Ice. Yeah. It's the only way to see all of your favorite teams, even if you don't live in their area. Subscribe now and see all the action from wherever you live. Oh, goal, baby. 
Because with NHL Center Ice, every game's a home game. NHL Center Ice, the game lives where you do. To order, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or visit directtv.com slash NHL. halftime in Hawaii after a very important day of college football. With Jesse Palmer, I'm Wendy Nix, and perhaps finally after 15 weeks, we have a better idea of the national title picture. Two very big games today, the second of which took place out in Arrowhead in Kansas City. It was a Big 12 championship. We can argue how they got there, but the Sooners did, and wow. No argument after this when Sam Bradford with a soft cast in his non-throwing hand. First quarter, first and goal, Chris Brown, the four-yard touchdown run, 10-0 Sooners. Later in the second quarter, Bradford buying some time, as he did all night long. He finds Joaquin Iglesias for the strike. It's a great job here by Joaquin Iglesias coming back to his quarterback to present him a big target. Early on, though, second quarter, Chase Daniel and company would answer, fakes the handoff, actually hit by Nick Harris, tries to answer, fumbles, Oklahoma recovers, would lead to a Bradford to Iglesias touchdown pass again. Uh, under three minutes left in the second quarter. Moses Madu, the 12-yard touchdown Moses run. Moses Madu filling in for an injured DeMarco Murray. He had three touchdowns on the day. Murray left in the first quarter and did not return. Daniel intercepted by Brian Jackson. That's the second turnover for the Mizzou QB. Would lead to another Oklahoma touchdown. 41-7 Sooners here. Daniel passes to Jeremy Macklin, but Quentin Carter there with the huge hit. And defense really stepped up in this game. They were opportunistic forcing turnovers, but putting hats on Missouri offensive play. Well, indeed, the defense did. Off the pitch right here, Madu goes 38 yards. Oklahoma wins 62-21. to They win the Big 12 championship. Bob Stoops with the Gatorade shower, and with good reason. He talks about his quarterback after this one. You know, Sam Bradford, again, is just sensational. His accuracy, his third down throws, and our running pass, you know, putting them both together. And defense really stepped up. You know, uh, we had a huge lead before they gave up anything in the second half. It was, it was a big... A big part in what got us motivated for this game, you know, listening to all the media talk about how we didn't deserve to be here, and then having to listen to Missouri talk about how the last two times we beat them were a fluke and we didn't deserve to be here and they were going to beat us tonight and prove everyone we didn't deserve to be here. So to come out and play the way we did, it, I mean, it's a great feeling. Sometimes playing with a chip on your shoulder is a good thing. With its 62 points, Oklahoma has now scored 702 points this season, making them the first team in FBS history to top the 700-point mark in a single season. In the process, the Sooners have also set an FBS record by scoring 60 points or more in five straight games. But, Jesse, perhaps what stood out tonight even more than those 62 points, and that's hard to say, is the tremendous balance on that Oklahoma offense. And it's an offense in tonight's game that totally more than 600 yards of total offense and they're so balanced both throwing the football and running the football and you start looking at this game Sam Bradford was just remarkable again he threw for 383 yards and three touchdowns I thought he did such a good job of extending plays getting outside the pocket getting into the creating mode and then giving his targets somewhere to go with the football Joaquin Inglesius Ryan Broles Jermaine Gresham all had big days and it was the running game that got off tonight as well DeMarco Murray went down early in the football game but Chris Brown and Moses Madu both totaled 100 yards rushing both had three touchdowns on the ground it was outstanding balance by this offense in tonight's game. Again, it's the first team to ever score 60 points in five straight games, but it all starts with Sam Bradford. Here's a quarterback now who's thrown for over 300 yards in 11 of 13 games. He's thrown more touchdown passes than anybody in the football bowl subdivision. He's thrown 49. He's also college football's most efficient passer right now. He has been magic all year long. And you would have to argue the Heisman front runner at this point. Of course, the Heisman presentation one week from tonight. Now, by the time Oklahoma took the field, they were already already aware of that SEC championship game. They knew the Gators had won. Tim Tebow and company coming in as favorites despite the fact that Nick Saban's squad was undefeated. The aforementioned Tebow play action looking for David Nelson. First down Gators. Third and goal here for Florida. Tebow under pressure to Carl Moore. Touchdown. Look where Tim Tebow throws this football. He puts it on the back shoulder low and away where only his wide receiver can make the catch. Well, Percy Harvin watching from the sideline. He would not play in this one. 
John Parker Wilson finds Julio Jones, breaks the tackle. He is still a true freshman. And you see the strength and the speed by Julio Jones. Florida was playing a lot of man-to-man -man coverage early in this football game, and Julio Jones made them pay. Talk about a quick strike. How about two plays? Same drive. Wilson hands off to Glenn Coffey. He will score. This capped off a two-play 82-yard touchdown drive by Alabama. They were able to answer and answer quick. Well, that would tie it up at seven. Wilson, the play action right here, finds Jones. That is good for the first down. Bama eating up the clock. This is the same drive. Hands off to Mark Ingram for the touchdown. Again, we're tied. See how dominant Alabama's offensive line can be. Well, after an Alabama field goal, Gators come right back from behind. Jeffrey Dips up and over. 24-20 Gators. They would never look back. Tebow to Aaron Hernandez. How about the leaping catch right here? Well, the running game of Florida opened up passing windows over the middle of the field in this game. Riley Cooper had a very productive afternoon. Tebow to Cooper for the touchdown. 31-20 Gators. Tim Tebow starts to sense it. So does this crowd in Atlanta. It was all but over at that point. Under two minutes left to play. Uh, Alabama with a last-ditch effort. Wilson's pass will not be complete. In fact, instead picked off by Joe Hayden. Urban Meyer with the Gatorade bath. Florida Gators, your SEC champs. You give credit where credit's due. If that was, uh, that's one of the best college football games I know I've ever been a part of. I think Alabama and Coach Saban and their staff. That was that was a dogfight. That was a toughness. That was a uh, check your will and to come back and play in the fourth quarter. It says a lot about our our team as well. Uh, I don't think it's uh, necessarily just my will. I think it's I think it's his will. I think it's our team's will um, and our you know rel relentlessness and you know our uh, our just attitude and our focus um, that we don't want to be denied uh, in anything we do. When we sit down and watch the film, we're going to see the mistakes that we made and the things that we didn't do correctly and how that affected the outcome of the game. And that's all about execution. And uh, when you play great teams, that's when the premium is on execution and uh, Florida is a great team. And we absolutely wish them the best of luck in representing our league uh, and hope they win the national championship. And that game appears to be set. Oklahoma and Florida expected to meet in Miami on January 8th. One thing we know for sure, if in fact the Gators and Sooners get together, it will be a high scoring affair. These are two of the three highest scoring teams in the country, combining to average over 90 points per game. They can certainly put points on the board. I'm no Jesse Palmer, that's for sure. I'm not an expert, but I'm going to guess if, in fact, this game does come to fruition, it will hinge on the play of these two very talented quarterbacks. And I think that's what makes this, this potential championship matchup so exciting as we have two quarterbacks playing. We expect both to be in New York at the Heisman Trophy presentation, and they're both dynamic in different ways. You start with Tim Tebow at Florida, maybe the best leader in all of college football, but certainly the most emotional leader on his football team. He is the pulse of the Florida Gators and he can hurt you with his arms and his legs. He's thrown 28 touchdown passes this year. He's only thrown two interceptions. He's also run for 12 touchdowns, but all season long, Tim Tebow has just willed his football team on to victory. And you look at Sam Bradford, the word efficiency comes out. What stems out to me about Sam Bradford is his uncanny accuracy, especially when throwing the football downfield. He is a threat to throw the home run ball every time he has it in his hands. The bottom line again, Sam Bradford's thrown 49 touchdown passes this year. Nobody's thrown more in the football bowl subdivision. And Sam Bradford on pace to break Colt Brennan's record for the best pass rating in a single season. His efficiency has just been off the charts. If indeed Oklahoma plays for the national title game, what a matchup we have both on the field but at the quarterback position. It might not get any better than this. Well, it might not get any better. It might not get any better for either one of these two guys next week if they win the Heisman for Tebow a second straight Heisman Trophy. We will know by this time next week. And then, of course, we look ahead to the national championship game on January 8th. USC likely not playing for a national title. They will be playing in the Rose Bowl, though, courtesy of a win over UCLA. We will look back at this one right after the break. There are those who dedicate themselves to a sense of honor, to a life of courage and a commitment to something greater than themselves. They have always defended this nation and each other. They still do. The few, the proud, the Marines.
have bowl questions, we have bowl answers. Join us Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, as we take you through all 34 bowls. Three full hours of game breakdowns and interviews with the key players in the BCS puzzle. Mark May, Lou Holtz, Kirk Herbstreet, and Lee Corso. Join me, Reese Davis, as we get you ready for bowl season, Sunday night, 8 Eastern, on ESPN. Bowl season is upon us, no question about that. But before the bowls, there was this game. For the first time in 26 years, USC and UCLA both sporting their home jerseys cost the Trojans a timeout. But as agreed upon, Rick Neuheisel called one early. Everybody was even. First quarter, we're tied up at seven. Mark Sanchez to Damian Williams. He takes it in for the strike. USC with the 14-7 lead. Sanchez does a great job getting Damian Williams the ball early so he can do something with it. Ah, fellas got a little testy coming out for the second half. Third quarter. Trojans up 21-7. Sanchez, the play fake over the middle to Patrick Turner. USC wins 28-7. Sanchez, 269 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. How about the ACC championship? 10 of 12 teams in the ACC. Bowl eligible. A lot of parity here. Today it was about Boston College and Virginia Tech. Second quarter, Vatek up seven. Tyrod Taylor under pressure. He fights his way in, though, the second rushing touchdown of the game for Taylor. And both rushing touchdowns came in the red zone. He was a monster in that situation. Uh-oh, it's 17-7. Frank Beamer getting an elbow in the face. He gets his sunglasses, headset all come off, but he is all right, and perhaps the reason why, his team's all right. Dominique Davis gets stripped right here. Orion Martin recovers and returns it for the touchdown. Four turnovers for Boston College. That was the story of this one. Virginia Tech, your ACC champions, 30-12. It was the 108th meeting of Army and Navy. Navy pitching a shutout. I'll show you how this one went down. The commander in chief on site. Coming up after the break. Love has arrived. And You're just too good to be true. My company was testing new armor plating for the military. We were designing this new multimedia center. My company was launching a new energy drink. The stuff had to stop a 50 caliber bullet. And the sound engineer changes all the specs. At midnight, we tested in Denver, LA. We worked every weekend. The clock was ticking. There was no room for error. The initial sales were through the roof. We really made a difference. We pulled it off. Dougie, 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 Dougie. What? Have you seen how easy GoDaddy.com is? Huh? Yeah, I just bought you for a buck ninety-nine. Did not. Yeah, I did. Dog nabbit. Whoops, just did your dog. Mr. Winky, my wife loves Mr. Winky. Ah, now I'm gonna do your wife. Your mother. You know I'm gonna do your mother now. Too late. I already did my mother. Pervert. Domain names for less than one dollar a month at GoDaddy.com. At their basic price, the phone company gives you unlimited calls locally. At $24.99, Vonage gives you unlimited calls nationally. All of Canada and Puerto Rico, plus free calls to five countries in Europe, and pennies a minute around the globe, including Mexico. Vonage works by connecting your high-speed internet with your phone. Get more of the world, just $24.99 a month. Call 877-4-VONAGE and get your first month free. It's a battle of nine and three teams for first place in the NFC South. Jeff Garcia and the Bucks are looking for their fifth straight win. They face off against Steve Smith and the Panthers, who are unbeaten at home. It's Bucks Panthers at 8:30 Eastern on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Well, boxing fans, this one is official. Manny Pacquiao defeating Oscar De La Hoya in the eighth round by TKO. The sixth loss of De La Hoya's career, the second decided by a knockout. How about another knockout? Michigan knocking out, knocking off the number four team in the country. Second half, game tied at 53. Kelvin Grady to Zach Novak again. Three from the corner, Michigan up by three. Less than two minutes to go. A five-point lead for Michigan. Manny Harris, sideline, the dunk. 
Michigan goes up seven and goes on to upset number four Duke 81 to 73. It's Navy and Army and who else? But the president George W on hand for the ceremonial coin toss. Nobody on the board here in the first quarter. Shun White, the pitch, breaks the tackle and breaks the way. 65-yard touchdown run. Navy came into this game averaging 292 yards a game on the ground. Shun White showing you why. It was, in fact, a shutout. 34-0 Navy over Army. Appalachian State, the defending FCS champions, hosting Richmond in the quarterfinals this year. First quarter, Richmond down by a touchdown. Josh Vaughn will take this right on in. Richmond, though, would miss the extra point down 7-6. You wonder if that would come back to haunt them. It is snowing in Boone, North Carolina, but it was Richmond's day. Eric Ward, the play action, bootlegs it into the end zone for the touchdown. In the end, they will advance 33-13 over the Mountaineers. James Madison, the win over Villanova, 31-27. Montana over Weber State, 24-13. And a close game, Northern Iowa wins by two over New Hampshire. A second half coming up from Hawaii on the way. Jesse Palmer, Wendy Dix. Enjoy, everybody. You know, it's not all fun and games when you're a mascot. Every year I find myself where the season always ends meets the bills never stop. You know that place where you realize even a squirrel can't live off peanuts? Well, maybe you don't, but believe me, I'm there. Here's a way to score on savings. Nice. Switch your car insurance to State Farm. You'll save big, plus get a payment plan that fits your budget. Call, click, or visit and start saving today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You know I wear this everywhere. Everybody's seen the Boise State, Oklahoma, last second come from behind Statue of Liberty highlight films. And most know about Heisman finalist Colt Brennan's 58 touchdowns and 5,500 yards passing. They know Hawaii was the second WAC team in as many years to play in a BCS bowl game. Kind of makes you wonder what we'll do for an encore. The Western Athletic Conference. Play up. ESPN's College Football Primetime, presented by K Jewelers. We welcome you back. Jimmy V Week on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation for Cancer Research in tribute to Jim Falfano and his dream to defeat cancer. Now, one team headed to the FedEx Orange Bowl, another to the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl, yet only seven points separate them. Big East champs up 10-3 on Hawaii. Let's enjoy the University of Hawaii Warriors Marching Band. here Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore pulling this tough assignment to come to Hawaii in December it was fun to watch all the college games today about laying yeah. in the sun it's a great week. Uh, you know I have a friend who likes to say that teams don't stay the same players don't stay the same they get worse or they get better Hawaii quarterback Greg Alexander has gotten better as the season has gone on it was me who said that right it is yeah, you're yeah, my friend yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> and, and you're right it's true I mean Alexander has gotten better from that first game where he was not very good against Florida to coming back in game eight and being very very good I've been impressed with him tonight he's a big strong quarterback accuracy has been very good he just hasn't had enough time and there's also a lot to be impressed with when you watch the defensive ends of Cincinnati well this has been part of the problem for the Hawaii offense is that their ends Connor Barlin and Lamont Nelms have been in the backfield a sack a tackle for a loss and then a strip that would have been something big had they had the opportunity to hang on to the football but those defensive ends are the key to that Cincinnati defense and they've been outstanding well very early on we talked about this potentially being a trap game for mm -hmm. Cincinnati but it took a bad turn on the very first series and that's Goodman their star wide receiver going down yeah I mean he really is a big part of their offense first play separated shoulder on that right sideline now he will not be back in this ball game but they do expect him to be okay in the bowl game. Now they had to turn to someone else and they turned to the rushing game and it really worked. And Isaiah P, little used most of the year, really stepped up in this ball game, rushing for 70 yards in the first half on six carries. His biggest output of the season so far, and it's really given that Cincinnati offense a boost with Goodman out. 
you see the first half stats there and turnovers one apiece but keep in mind there was also the blocked field goal so the big special teams play by Hawaii that they then returned then subsequent to that they had the fumble that was recovered on a quarterback pressure by Cincinnati so Hawaii will get the ball here first Jake Rogers to kick Malcolm Wayne back deep and here is Lane able to get it out to the 25 yard line. Now at the end of the first half Hawaii had some success throwing the ball particularly their screen passes. They still have not gotten the kind of production they need on the outside from Michael Washington and Malcolm Lane and those guys have to catch the ball and get yardage after the catch and that would really help out Alexander who's been really on target. And keep in mind that Cincinnati's star cornerback Mike Mickens and he injured his left knee had the arthroscopic surgery he's out into the Orange Bowl he's the career leader in interceptions so he is not in action tonight so maybe they could test the outside downfield Alexander with an empty backfield to open up this second half five receivers for Greg Alexander and Alexander throws it behind Washington but it is complete. As Ryan Manilak had the coverage, but a very good play by Washington. What a great catch. I mean, that's one handed with the ball thrown behind him. One of the few times Alexander has not been very accurate. And this ball's behind. Look at this. Great one handed grab. Pulls that thing in, keeps it from hitting the ground. And that's Coach Lee to give me a quick scouting report on Washington. He simply said, quick as a cat. Good hand speed there making that grab. So Alexander here on. Second one, three steps and complete to Payne. And Payne running lateral just a yard in front of that first down yardage, but a pickup of three taken down by Manilak and a first down for the Warriors. So they've gone to three step action. Quarterback takes three steps, gets rid of the ball because of those defensive ends that we talked about at halftime, how great they've played. So in order to get Alexander a little time, get the ball out of there quickly. Don't let him get set. Libre now in the backfield with Alexander. So trying to carry that momentum that came from the end of the first half offensively here into the second half. Alexander to pass again. He thought about just shoveling it forward to Libre, then tucked it himself and got back to the original line of scrimmage. Did you see what I saw? He slid. That's, That's a rarity for yeah, him. Alexander slid at the end of the play. It's this big guy has been known to run into some tackles and try and you know run guys over but watch him here he goes down I think he's learning. Well he's as big as a lot of linebackers and some edge oh. defensive ends that he goes up against. They list him at 6 3 2 30. He's not a biscuit under no. 2 30. No, 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 he's no, no, a no. thick guy. No he's about a 240 guy at least. So now three by one Libre remaining in as the running back flanking Alexander. And to pass again. And that is batted and it falls incomplete. But Ryan Manilak, a flag is down. Manilak had a shot at that ball that was deflected. Yeah, it's a great play by Connor Barwin, the defensive end. They moved him to a rover spot. A little use of the hands, number 77 offense. His hands are on the face pass of the defender. Ten yard penalty, second down. And that's the left tackle, Aaron Kia. And of course, he faces a tough matchup tonight against Cincinnati. Yeah, both those defensive ends are really good but Barwin they took him off of the line of scrimmage and instead of having him rush the passer look at him they back back him off and he's just kind of spying kind of a rover roving around there spying and he looks up and oh there's the ball and almost comes up with it. Former tight end has also played some basketball five career touchdown catches and 11 sacks leading the Big East. He can do it all just a superb athlete is Barwin. So it backs him up to a second and 20. Alexander, quick pass again, and it is complete. Back in what was the original line of scrimmage. He was able to get it to Michael Washington. So it'll make for a third and 10. Yeah, you notice they've come out in the second half trying to feature Washington. And we talked about at halftime how he hadn't had a lot of catches, and now they come out. He's in the middle right there. Right there. But he catches the ball the second time, not the first time. Yeah, he popped it up in the air, but he didn't get it until the second time. 
line to make is the 47. David Farmer, the running back, he adds some extra pass protection for Alexander. Plenty of time, and he airs it deep, looking for Lane. And he holds it in to the one-yard line. 60-yard reception. Malcolm Lane comes up big. What a throw. Here's the isolation of Lane working against the free safety Cedric Tober gets behind him and that ball hit him in a bad place right on the numbers. Fortunately for Hawaii he got it on the rebound. His what a ball, fortunate bounce Rod. Oh, that ball was perfectly thrown. I mean Alexander had perfect timing put enough air underneath it and just let his receiver out there. And now the big back farmer into the end zone. Are they loving this here at Aloha Stadium? Not much to it. You got Farmer at 245 just pounding it in to finish off the drive with that 60 yard pass to Malcolm Lane. Dan Kelly to tie the game up. So the Orange Bowl bound Big East champs in a tie game with Hawaii. They talk about Hawaii and their coaching staff and this team having gotten better as the season has gone on. They found their run and shoot and the coaching staff gelled and the offense has come back big time. Malcolm Lane put Hawaii into the fast lane. We got ourselves a tie game at Aloha Stadium. Hey Steve. What's up, Kay? Hey, would you characterize your speed as explosive or incendiary? What'd you say? Hold on. What'd you ask? I think that answers it. Incendiary. Need anything else? Thanks. I'm good. I got my answer. Wait a minute. How do you spell? Did you say something? Is this one of those I before E words? You folks are the only ones left. Um, we just wanted to go down. You don't down. want to go down there. It's a dead zone. Calls are always getting cut off. We have the Verizon network. You good? We also got some really nice wreaths out front if you're interested. We test our network every day to be America's most reliable. Verizon Wireless. And now get the Titanium Voyager for just $99.99. Scientific tests show that when one drinks Dr. Pepper slowly, one can truly relish the 23 flavors. Would that we could savor all our relationships, much as the conductor savors his Corral Nocturna. Slowly. Comments, caller? Only one, Fraser. You never savored me slowly. Well, Lilith, I guess I finally found the right icy doctor. Fraser, I don't... Slower is better. Trust me, I'm a doctor. And let me upgrade you to the best channels in HD. Only on Direct TV. Let me, let me, let me upgrade. Get the most TV for your money. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Seasoning's greetings from your mates at Outback. Get a free $20 bonus card when you buy $100 in holiday gift cards. This telecast available on ESPN2 and ESPN2 HD. That allows you to see all the brilliant sights of Honolulu. Where they are cranked up here at Aloha Stadium, Hawaii 7-5. In a year when they lost everything offensively. They lost June Jones, but somehow, some way, they found themselves late in the season. And rolling into this game, winners of three straight and earning a spot in the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl and now facing a BCS bound team here in Cincinnati and all tied up. John Goble 
Oh, there's a loose ball. Hawaii picks it up. Inside the five-yard line. Wow, momentum with the Warriors. Looked like Jason Rago, the backup running back, jumped on it. Well, that's Gebo with the ball, and they've been kicking away from him, and you're absolutely right. It looks like that was, in fact, Rago, the backup running back, who picks this up, but a good hit, a big hit, knocks the ball out, and momentum is big time for Hawaii. So right back to it with Libre in the backfield. Here's Libre. And unable to find much room against that front, just a pickup of one. Aaron Webster coming up from that safety position. And the special teams for Hawaii paying off. Guten Galdera getting high fives for the hard hit. And big turnover here. In the second half. This second half has belonged to Hawaii. Alexander now to pass. Tucks it. And just gets forward inside the three yard line. Will bring up a third goal. Well, Adam you, Hoppel with the tackle. If you're going to throw down here, Tess, you, you have to throw it quickly because there's not a lot of room. I mean, you got about 12 yards to work with from the line of scrimmage to the back of the end zone. And if you have seven or eight guys dropping in coverage, it is not easy to get the ball in there. So if you're going to throw it, you got to throw it quickly. You can spread them out and run it. Coach Ron Lee spent the past nine years as June Jones's receivers coach. Got the promotion to offensive coordinator. Let's see what he dials up here on third and goal. Play action. Alexander pressure. Just shuffles it forward and does so with the score. Malcolm Lane, after the 60 yard reception that set up the last touchdown, now the little one in a big way. You see? You start watching TV, you watch Brett Favre, and you see him do things like this, and all of a sudden, everybody else tries it. Alexander, no way to get rid of the ball. Look at that. That is a Brett Favre throw if you've ever seen one. Just find a way to get the ball to your receiver lane, and he does. He's under duress, and he just a shovel pass from about eight yards away. Wow. Any which way, what does it matter? And Kelly caps it with the extra point. Great start to the second half for Hawaii. Well, we've had a couple of touchdowns by Hawaii and a turnover by Cincinnati in the second half. Only six minutes in. And that started on that kickoff as Gable gave up the ball after the big hit. And then this, Alexander to Lane. And Hawaii searches out in front. The nine Rose Bowl game. Coverage begins New Year's Day at 4.30 Eastern on ABC. So last month, I was in a hotel elevator with, you're never going to believe this, Mary J. Blige. I just wanted to scream. What's the 411 changed my life? I've seen you in concert five times. I sing your songs in the shower. I even know your birthday, January 11th. Problem was, my mouth didn't work. Now, every time you use a participating city card, you're in it for a chance to win an amazing in-studio experience with Mary J. Blige. Hey! Want the story of a lifetime? Your city card can help you write it. thing your husband said to you that morning 
He looked at me and said, Susan, where am I? <laughs> and why was that upsetting for you? My name is Diane. Crazy times call for crazy fun. Enter the ultimate Vegas escape sweepstakes at visitlasvegas.com. Monday, the day you wonder if sleeping six inches from the ceiling is healthy. When you can't miss your 8.30 lab again because of that fascist attendance policy. It's the day you question why you'd ever need to know any of this stuff. But with Monday comes Monday Night Football on ESPN. So try and control yourself. When the 9 and 3 Bucks and Panthers battle for first place. Because when you get an F on a Monday, there's always an M and an N in front of it. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by City. Whatever your story is, your City card can help you write it, because City never sleeps. Warrior spirit here in Honolulu. This place has come alive. Two quick scores here in the second half, and Hawaii's on top of the Big East champs, 17 to 10. John Goble back in to return the kick. He fumbled the last time he was out there, and it led to that quick score by the Warriors. Marty Gilliard is also back. He's the dangerous one. It happened pretty quickly. This will be Goble again. Good return this time. Out across the 40 to the 43. Dan Kelly, the kicker. Running him down. 41 yard return. Well, here's how they did it, Rod. Okay. And Malcolm Lane with a 60 yard catch to get things started. Yeah, Tess, that was a rebound. It was all pretty fast. That set up a nice little touchdown run. And then on the unsuing kickoff, Bobo gave it up. A fumble which set up Hawaii for this. Malcolm Lane shuttle pass from Alexander. Two touchdowns in just a few minutes for Hawaii, and all of a sudden they're up by seven. And 14 points in a minute 33, and there are. The drives you see first four struggling to get things going and then scoring all those points at the end of half and to start off this second half. And now Peed not finding any running room. That was a loss of one. Isaiah P taken down by La Eli. Remember we talked about the second half and the week that Cincinnati has had. And just just think about the beach, the timing, this, just the time zone. Well, how about the fact that it's about 1:45 in the morning according to their body clocks? Well, what like on Cincinnati time? Pike told us the other day he said he was getting phone calls early in the morning waking him up because people didn't realize the time difference. Pete again. Freshman trying to fight for extra yards. He gets it to the 47, but that Hawaii defense is just swarming right now with all the energy and momentum. David Vicuni getting into the mix there. Very good defensive end. Yeah, but again, not to belabor the point, but the second half is a thing we talked about early on and whether Cincinnati would have their legs in the second half because of all the time out here in the sun, on the beach, the time difference, the long flight. Just the mentality, takes the, yeah. the mentality of how they were approaching this game, knowing it was on the schedule before the season started. This was kind of viewed as their bowl game. They didn't realize they were going to have the year they had. Third and six now. Pike pressure gets rid of it. Needs to make one good move, but unable to do so. Wrapped up immediately. Well short of the line to make. Just a pickup of two. You know. Hawaii has done this for years. They they know they can get you over here to play them. It's a great environment and they come after you. I mean their play has been great. Kazim Ali is the guy here who makes this play. So back into punt is Huber. Washington lets it bounce. Oh no, very good special teams play. And then fielded inside the five. What a dangerous move. And a flag comes down out at about the 15 yard line. During the 
kick. With a block on the back, number 29 on the receiving team. The penalty will be half the distance of goal line from the end of the kick. First down. So Greg Alexander and the Hawaii offense will be backed up against their own goal line when we return. Hawaii up a touchdown on the Big East champs. Remember when Christmas was magical? When the mailman delivered to the North Pole. And we all had a front row, shoulder top seat at the parade. Let's get back there. Santa's Wonderland at Bass Pro Shops has what we've all been missing. His eyes just lit up. There's trains. I see cars. The darts. I can see it being a family tradition every year. There's a lot of stuff for the kids to do. They love it a lot, and it's free. Time passes. Hold on to Christmas. Where's Coffee Shop? Where's Coffee Shop? Cafe Latte. Man to pay. Where are the stores? There are the stores. Find all the gifts on shopping list. Four pair of socks. Sausage in a box. Soap on a rope. Stuffed antelope. On road again. Coffee's kicking in. Heart palpitates. Car navigates. This can't be real. Hands on the wheel. Here's what you say. Tells you the way. Hustle and bustle. Tension and muscle. Soar and it demands. Big Swedish hands. Give a, give a, give a, give a garment. Green, clear and white. Whole world inside. Garment.com. Celebrate 25 days of Christmas favorites. Too much. And holiday blockbusters. 25 days of Christmas, only on ABC Family. Netflix interviews, take one. Oh, Netflix is the best. That little red envelope, you know, when it arrives in the mail. It's kind of like getting a little gift. With Netflix, you can never be without a movie. Just go online and choose from over 100,000 DVD titles. And I love the choice. The selection's absolutely fantastic. I think they have pretty much everything you could want under the sun. With Netflix, there's no late fees. No due dates. You can keep the movie as long as you want. I kept a movie for four months. <laughs> we got our movies really quickly. Next day for me. Plans start at just $4.99 a month. And now, as an added bonus to your DVD, Watch some movies and TV shows instantly on your PC for no additional fee. You get DVDs in the mail, but you also can watch movies online instantly. At no additional cost. Just click and start watching in as little as 30 seconds. The thing I like is it's easy. You just click on instant viewing and it's there. Start your free Netflix trial today. I'm definitely a Netflix fan. Netflix. Get DVDs in the mail fast. Plus, some instantly on your PC. Go to TryNetflix.com to start your free trial. Cincinnati Bearcats, their longest trip of the season was for tonight's game. Went through security just like everyone else. And once on board, the preferred activity, well, what else when you're flying to Hawaii? Catch some Zs. Look at Brownie getting tucked in. Charter made its way over the Pacific. Play a little cards, a few more hours, and 4,430 miles. And finally, Gilliard says, Oh, my goodness. Indeed, a little happy to be here. <laughs> but Brian Kelly talked about all week. We don't want to be too happy to be here. We don't want a vacation mentality for what kind of has almost a bowl feel to it after the end of the season and time to celebrate that Big East championship. But you got to play up to what you are here. And right now they trail by seven. Alexander fumbled that snap for a moment and then just runs forward and gets it out to the 11 yard line. And that's what Alexander does very well. Yeah, yeah, big guy, quarterback draw here. Gets a nice cross block there. Big block by Lafa Tuitui Marinier, who was able to come across and get that block. And Alexander just jumped in right behind him. So that worked out very well, as now they have breathing room with a second and one. Libre and he has running room if he can get to the edge. Now he squares those shoulders and buries a shoulder into a defender and is out to the 25 yard line as Underwood forced him out of bounds. 14 yard run for the senior Libre. You know, and, and Greg McMacken told his team that playing Cincinnati was about their BCS and how much it would mean to this program to knock off Cincinnati. Pride, the pride of the whack. They, the, all that, feeling all that. And he's done a great job with this, this team this season and with this coaching staff. Did a great job too this offseason just preparing this team. They had a lot of fun. They played some uh, roughneck basketball, some tug of war, little team building skills to get them ready for all the changes ahead. And they tried to get it to Solace coming across on the screen, unable to connect. 
You know, a lot of people say, well, we know June Jones complained a lot about the situation here in Hawaii. So McMacken was here. He understood the circumstances. What's the deal? And he says, hey, listen, it was all addressed. I'm satisfied with the improvements. We were over at the facilities the other day putting in a new field turf for well, practice. Well, the fact of the matter is, you know, had they addressed those things before June left, June might still be That's here. That's right. You know, McMacken got those things promised to him and squared away. And he's very close to June Jones. They talk very often. Of course, June at SMU now. Second and ten, five receivers, and here's Payne. And Payne gets it out ahead for a first down over the 40-yard line, a 16-yard reception to Aaron Bain. Well, and the other thing with Hawaii, as you watch his run and shoot now come into to full bloom as Bain makes that cross cut over the middle and picks up the ball in stride. Perfect timing and accuracy. I mean, it took time for the coaching staff to get used to each other and work well together. And Ron Lee, you know, took over as offensive coordinator. And, and he had to find all the pieces, the right quarterback, and get some inexperienced receivers up to speed as well. McMacken says, don't talk about me and the success. Talk about my coaches. They've done the outstanding job. Screen pass to Libre. Blockers in front, but unable to get past that first wave of defenders that included Adam Hopple. Yeah, you think about what Hawaii lost offensively. Look at what they had the last couple of years under June Jones and with Colt Brennan at quarterback. Over 40 points a game in 2006 and 2007 and first in the country in points scored. And then this year, as they went through a tr uh, tr transition trying to find a quarterback and get those inexperienced receivers up to speed, they dropped back to 25 points a game. And coming into this year in the last nine years Hawaii finished no lower than fourth nationally in passing. Alexander. And that is complete to Washington. He's going to be about a yard and a half short of the first down. Well one of the most prolific passers in the history of college football Hawaii's Colt Brennan set 31 NCAA records in his three seasons. 131 career touchdown passes over 14,000 career passes. Yards. And of course last December invited to the Heisman Trophy presentation where he finished third. And don't forget one of those receivers that he had was Devon Bess who's with the Miami Dolphins. So a lot of offense left this place. They lost all four starting receivers to Hawaii. Now on third one Alexander trying to do it himself. That was a third very long nope. one and he didn't get it at all. Nope. Nope. He's a little too hot. You know, sometimes big, tall, strong quarterbacks don't get low enough when they have to pick up this yardage. Look how high he is. I mean, he's almost standing straight up. And look at who's pulling him back, Connor Barwin. Yeah, Barwin's just involved in everything. But you got to get low if you're going to get that, or you got to jump over the top. And here they go. Well, I, I have no problem with Hawaii going for this. Absolutely not. No, I mean, they're trying to knock off a BCS team and get to eight wins and get ready for their bowl game in a few weeks. Fourth and one and midfield. Second effort by Alexander. He didn't have it at first. And then he spun free. Well, he gets a little bit lower this time. You see him now he's lower and he's using all of his power and strength to push himself in there. Put that backside in there. Right? Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> he just dug in. Turn that back. You can't spun do, around. Can't do it forwards. Go backwards. So a fresh set of downs for the Warriors, converting the fourth down there. Alexander, quick look. Salas is open off the fingertips. Sunday at 8 Eastern on ESPN, it'll be the Bowl Selection Special. Reese Davis, Kirk Herbstreit, Lou Holtz, Lee Corso, Mark May. They're going to take a look at all 34 bowls at Sunday night at 8 Eastern. Hawaii is going to the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl. And of course, Cincinnati going to the FedEx Orange against Virginia Tech, the ACC champs. There's going to be a lot of great matchups on ESPN. In the coming weeks, I'm looking forward to that Emerald Bowl we're doing. That looks like it's shaping up to be California and Miami. Did you hear about the game jo job at oh. Best had today? Oh, he's he's unbelievable. Whoa, 300 yards rushing. Here's Farmer now on the backfield. And 
Just about back to the original line of scrimmage. Dominic Battle came up. And here's a look at some of the projected BCS bowls. And you see Cincy and Va Tech. You know, this, this may work out okay, but I can't help but wonder what would happen if you had that USC defense facing, say, Oklahoma's offense I'd or Tim Tebow's offense at Florida. I would love to see that USC defense against that Oklahoma offense. That, according to ESPN's Brad Edwards, the projected BCS Bowl matchups. And, uh, of course, Texas and all their fans have a gripe. Oklahoma, Do they ever. Oklahoma getting to the uh, Big 12 championship game over them. Greg Alexander pressured as he was winding up. He was looking to go deep, but the pressure came from D'Angelo Smith. Speaking of Texas, remind me I have to fill out my Heisman ballot, right? Ah, yes, the Heisman ballot. Now, look, this has been happening all night. Pressure from the outside, those defensive ends. This time, a little bit, of, a little bit more pressure with the blitz. But those ends have wreaked havoc most of the night on Hawaii's offense. It's only been this four or five minute stretch in the third quarter that Hawaii's offense has really been rolling tonight. Russell into punt, DJ Woods to return. This kick tries to pin it, takes a bounce, and then into the end zone for the touchback. 50 yard punt. So you've settled on your Heisman, huh? I think I know which way the ink's going to dry on the ballot. All right, I, I hope you don't disappoint me. Well, where are you leaning in terms of the Heisman Trophy, Rod? Well, you know, it's been Big 12 quarterbacks all year, except for the addition of Crabtree and Tebow. If you're asking me, I would look in terms of McCoy, Bradford, Tebow. But Tebow was great today. I just still think over the long course of the season, Bradford and McCoy performed a little better, and I'd give it to McCoy. Play action from Tony Pike. Had a step up and then taken down. David Bakuni, a team leading 15 tackles for loss, nine sacks now on the year. And as Coach McMacken said, flat out, he's been our best player. Yeah, he just beats the one on one blocking right there that time on the right side of your screen as he gets around Khalil El Amin, makes the sack. And he's a guy that should have been a first team all WAC conference guy. He was last year. But he didn't get the get the nod this season, and that really frustrated the Hawaiian coaching staff. Aloha Stadium starting to shake here as they cheer on their defense. Pike now five receivers, and that ball was thrown behind Howard. And Howard, just the body language looking back to Tony Pike, not what you want to see. You know, you just wonder. Are, are things coming apart for Cincinnati? I mean, you know, you've lost your one of your top offensive weapons. You haven't had anything go your way in the second half. You're a long way from home. Hawaii is playing lights out right now. How do you overcome this adversity? Third and 16. Pressured again. Taken down again. And the Hawaii defense is rolling. And it's Bakuni with loads of pressure and a flag comes in late. Now the Cincinnati players are pointing at Hawaii like it's going to be called on them. During the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 17 on the defense. 15 yards. That's Solomon Elamimian. And McMackin knows, Coach McMackin knows, boy, what a blown opportunity there. They would have been punting from their end zone, Cincinnati. A couple of sacks there, and instead, they get out of a big hole. Well, here he is. You'll see what he does at the end here. It's a defenseless player, and you cannot take shots at defenseless players, and that's Gilliard. And that's been the theme all season from officials. They will protect defenseless players. You just have to control yourself better than that. If you're a senior, co-defensive player of the year in the WAC. So a first down for Cincinnati. They get out of a big, big hole thanks to the penalty. Goble. 
warm and another penalty marker comes in. Personal foul. Tripping. Number 56 on the offense. Penalty half the distance to the goal line. First down. Chris Jurek the center. He's been flagged a couple of times tonight. They got him earlier for a holding call and now for tripping. He's going to move him back again and just when they were getting a chance to get out of momentum. Well back in 2002 these guys met up and it got ugly following the game. Hawaii won 2019 but the two teams brawled for five minutes. Police had to come in and break things up and escort the Bearcats to their locker room. In fact, Cincinnati fans that were at that game, they said they had to come down to the field and the leave that field play was level. snapped from the 29-yard line. The change will be set from there. 15-yard penalty will be assessed. Replay first down. So even though you don't think of these teams as teams that are a rivalry or play much, Coach, there is a history. There is a history between these two of this kind of stuff, of this type of game developing. Uh, I don't expect it to get chippy. Well, not to that game. extent. No, no. I don't expect that at all. Obviously, different coaches. Well, di different. Then. Well, different coaches and just different circumstances. Different circumstances, yeah. indeed. You've got a Cincinnati team that's heading to a BCS game. You have a Hawaii team that's had a lot of a lot of success. Pleased with what they've done this year after a tough start, and they've got a bowl game here, you know, in, in a few weeks. I I just don't think it's going to get chippy with these two programs now. Backed up to just inside the 15 yard line. Goble. Not much there. Push back, and here comes in another defender for Hawaii. Oh, correction. It's getting a little chippy. It is. Goble did not like the little extra emphasis when he was taken down. Francis Maka made the initial tackle, but then a little something extra. Watch this. Yeah, it's the very end of it. Now he stopped, he figures progress is done, and there's the extra hit. And that was Ryan Mouton who came in with the extra hit, and then the toss to the turf. Mouton's the guy who's limited in his action tonight with the injury, but he made the most of that. Second and 23 for Tony Pike and the Bearcats. Over the middle, and that ball intercepted. Thomas, Desmond Thomas. Well, Thomas gets the pick, but he did not make the play. The coverage is excellent. Man underneath coverage. Look at the great position. Knock the ball up in the air, and Thomas is able to take advantage of that. But it was Dowling who was in position to make the play. What a way to close out the third quarter. 17-10, Hawaii up. Imagine eliminating your monthly phone bill forever. How much could you save? We're talking about savings. How about $100? How about $200, $300, $400? I'm just getting started. How about $500, $600, $700? Hold me back, there's more. $800, $900. How about $1,000 a year in savings? That's what Magic Jack can put back in your pocket. They've moved that jack connection out of the wall and into your computer. Now, just simply go ahead and plug in any telephone, corded, cordless, whatever you like, into your computer, and lo and behold, you are connected to the largest 
digital telephone network in the world, the internet. And when your calls go out over the internet, all your calls are free. A $69.95 value. We are talking $39.95. We're gonna give you that first year of free local and long distance calling. And we're gonna give you the free phone number for life, free caller ID, free voicemail, free three-way calling, even free directory assistance. Listen to this, you can't pay for it today. No, we're gonna send it out to you to try for 30 full days. If you are not totally in love with the Magic Jack, you send it back, you owe nothing because we didn't charge you a penny in the first place to send it out. We'll even cover the postage to return it. PC Magazine Editor's Choice. Magic Jack's call quality is amazing. It's almost too good to be true. Everybody should try it. If you get a busy signal, call back. If you have to sit on hold, just please wait. If we sell out, take a reservation, fire your phone company. We'll see you next time. College football's heroes of the past welcome a new member to their exclusive club. Saturday, December 13th, one college football player will transcend greatness and become a legend. Will it be one of a trio of gifted Big 12 quarterbacks? Sam Bradford, Colt McCord, or Graham Harrell? Or will Florida's superhero retain his crown? The Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Nissan, December 13th at 8 on ESPN, followed by the greatest game ever played. Joe Tessator and Rod Gilmore with you in Hawaii and of three. And we could have an upset here in the last regular season game of the college football season. Tomorrow, of course, it's all about the NFL. First at 11 Eastern, Chris Berman hosts Sunday NFL Countdown presented by I IBM. Then at 7 Eastern, Berman and Saunders deliver the day's highlights and scores during Sports Center. Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM and Sports Center presented by Bud Light Sunday on ESPN. So the turnover, the interception by Desmond Thomas, and now Hawaii in prime position to start this fourth quarter. Alexander has time and has Salas. And Salas fighting for first down yardage and then run out of bounds by Tory Cornett, an 11 yard reception. Well, let's go back and take a look at our AutoZone playbook tonight. And it was that great pick. That we saw just a After couple of plays over, ago. Personal foul. Here you see the receiver who's going to try and beat what is known as cover two man. You have a zone with two safeties behind and then man to man coverage underneath. And the quarterback, Pike, is going to try and squeeze it over the top of the first defender and then in front of the second defender. That is very difficult to do. You can't squeeze that in there when you have such great position by two defensive backs bracketing that receiver completely. A great play by Dowling to toss it up in the air and Desmond Thomas picks it off and that set up Hawaii for what could be another score. At the end of that last play there was a personal foul called against John Estes the starting center for Hawaii. So that'll back up the Warriors. You know I, I think I stand corrected it, it's gotten a little chippy. It has. This game has gotten chippy. It's been physical all night long. Hawaii has come into the it. Of the play was a first down, so the 15 yards would be penalized, and then the change of his step, it is first and 10. Watch this. Yeah, here, here at the end of the play, you've got Sellis being thrown to the sideline, and then you see on the field Estes taking a shot at one of the Cincinnati players. Listen, Hawaii has come in here with that defend our house kind of mentality. Well, and the other thing, Big East, they're going Big East, so what? Yeah, they're saying BCS. We'll show you BCS. You know, the, the whole thought was, well, if Hawaii, the second best team in the WAC, can beat Cincinnati, what's that say about Boise State and how Boise State should stand in the BCS? Alexander now. Farmer. Just over the middle and to about the 28-yard line. 
Let's update Rob's research from Hawaii. You laid it for early tonight. How have they done? Well, you know, they started picking it up. The turnover margin, excellent, plus two. Offense, well, they didn't get it down in the first half, but they started picking it up in the second half, throwing the ball to Lane in Washington. And then defense, they've done a great job of handling Gilliard and Goodman. Goodman has been out because he was injured on the very first play, but Gilliard has not been a factor in the second half so far. Leading receiver for Cincinnati, Dominic Goodman, a separated shoulder. They say that he may be back for the Orange Bowl. Boy, do they need him in this offense. Alexander, a little sidearm now to Washington. And Washington with a first down to the 16-yard line, 13-yard gain. Tess, the other thing that's happening to Cincinnati defensively, they are no longer getting pressure with their front four. They're bringing blitzes now to try and disrupt what's going on for Hawaii. And when we, when we knew they'd get to that spot, that would be a problem because there's so many quick receivers out there. you got man-to-man -man coverage, and Alexander gets the ball out quickly. They don't want to blitz. They want to rely on their front four to make pressure. What was that you were saying earlier tonight about in the second half watch out for the Cincinnati defense getting those beach legs. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you you and I got some beach legs after being on the beach. It's all right when too. you're broadcasting <laughs> not when you're trying to play we can, defense. We can go to second half. Alexander plenty of time now he's going to run it himself and just ducks out of bounds at the 15 yard line. Greg Alexander his emergence is really helped out this team greatly. They were struggling to find their groove offensively. Obviously Colt Brennan leaves. June Jones out the door. The starting receivers out the door. They were trying to find that guy and Greg Alexander turned into that guy in the course of the last month. Well early in the season they had Inoke Fanaki as their quarterback and they ran a lot of option with the run and shoot. Now they've essentially gotten rid of the option and gone back to trying to throw the ball 90 95 percent of the time. Three different quarterbacks in the first three games this season for Hawaii. Shovel pass to Libre. Libre fumbles the ball. And Cincinnati has it. And that may just be what they need here. They needed a break. And Corey Smith with the recovery. They yeah. desperately needed a turnover. To the ground. Oh. Incomplete. They say that's an incomplete pass. What a break for Hawaii. Yeah, well, it is a pass. The only question is whether he had possession. An official came in and said fumble recovery since he and then overruled. Let's look. Yeah, if he had possession, then it's a fumble. But this is a pass. Close. So if he didn't possess the ball, it's incomplete. From that angle, I could not tell whether he actually had full control. Now remember with a with an official review you have to have conclusive evidence to overturn the call on the field. So we have to see evidence that he clearly had possession of the football. If you don't see clear evidence that he had the football then the incomplete call on the field should stand. Well Mont Nelms was the defensive end who came crashing in. Cincinnati is checking the play when he's completed catch and the receiver fumbled the ball. So the ruling on the field favors Hawaii as an incomplete pass. Brian Kelly and the coaching staff of Cincinnati are hoping that the replay official who is Michael Gashima tonight sees otherwise. And, and really it's it's a somewhat subjective test here. It is possession. Do you determine that he has possession? There isn't this standard of oh he's got to take two steps or anything like that. It is simply did he possess the ball. It has come to that time in the game. You can just feel the momentum. It's like a downhill slide here in Hawaii. Full second half. They need this one, Rod. Yeah, and here's another look. There's the ball. One, two steps, and then hit. Now, from that angle, you can't tell if he's fumbling the ball around, exactly. but it looks like he has the ball. But from that angle, you're looking over someone's head, and you can't tell if he has complete control over it. And this angle, he has his back turned, does lead race, so it's hard to see what's going on with his hands. So you would have to say, Rod, that the advantage goes to the, how it was ruled on the field. We try that angle, and it looked from that angle like he started to put the ball away. And if you catch it and tuck it away, then to me that says possession. Now that angle showed me that he caught the ball and then brought it in. Now so long as he wasn't fumbling it as he brought it in, then that's possession. That angle looked like possession. 
Here's another look. Yeah, this is the angle that looked closest to having possession. But again, you're so far away. After review, the ruling of the field stands as yeah. called. It is an incomplete pass. I think that's yeah, one think of those where because of what the ruling on the field is, yeah, it stands yeah. up. I, I think that's right, because we're looking at that last angle and trying to determine from far away if if he did have possession. It wasn't conclusive conclusive. You know, I can see how you could see that he had possession, but you can't say that this clearly tells you that he has possession and he is not doing anything other than clearly securing the football. It's not not clear there. I think it's the right call by the officials. The first two looks we had didn't tell you anything and this third one is debatable. So Greg McMacken and his Warriors retain possession as Libre looks like shook up on that last play. Five receivers for Alexander on third and ten. Will Gonzalez's way swings it to the end zone. Touchdown, Warriors. John Medeiros. What could have been Bearcats ball turns into a Hawaii celebration. And Alexander had to wait for Medeiros to come open. And watch him wait. Watch how long he hangs in there. He knows he's going to get hit, but he waits and he waits. Now watch him. This is Medeiros right here. He is just trying to come over with a post pattern and he cleared very late but cleared in the back of the end zone and the ball was there. Excellent, excellent play. Kelly to try and make it a 14 point margin and he does. So little John Medeiros, five foot nine, just a tough nosed kid from right here in Oahu, comes up big, and the Big East champs are in a hole. So the storm is the world's first touchscreen BlackBerry. It's only on Verizon Wireless, and it's got this huge, brilliant screen. It's perfect for videos, pictures, and more. Now get a free Bluetooth headset with purchase at Best Buy. I love this thing. At Zero Price, successful investing is about balancing risk and reward intelligently. For each three, five, and 10-year period, over 75% of our mutual funds beat their lipper average. Finding the right opportunity. Low-cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. Phillips Norelco Architect. The shaver with a flexible head that pivots and rotates freely. So now you can easily get a close shave even on the neck. obsession was born digitally restored in high definition color and in association with NFL films ESPN films presents a modern airing of football's classic game 12 Hall of Fame players made their mark in an overtime thriller that captured a nation and changed the course of the NFL the greatest game ever played presented by Sprint December 13th on ESPN Welcome back to Aloha Stadium where Hawaii has been all over number 13 Cincinnati. Many looked at this game and said this is going to be the upset of the day. Fourth quarter they're up 24 to 10 on a team that's headed to a BCS bowl game. Here's Gilliard. And Gilliard is able to get it out to the 20 yard line but Rod that this has been a miserable second half for Cincinnati you know if you are the champion of a BCS conference you cannot have one yard 
of offense in the second half of a ball game. After the play was over, personal foul. Number 50 on the kicking team. 15 yard penalty. First down. We've seen a lot of that tonight. Personal fouls. Yeah, well, both these teams need to clean that up. It's been going on for a quarter now. There's again a late hit around the pile trying to clean up the pile. Latuli, number 50. He gets flagged for it. That is Manny Silva, who's down for Hawaii, defensive back for the Warriors. 24 to 10, Hawaii on top. More to come after this. My mother used to say, always keep your heart open. It's the only way to give and receive love. That's the inspiration behind my open hearts collection at Kay Jewelers. I worked with Kay because as the number one jewelry store in America, they've brought more hearts together than, well, just about anyone. My wish is that my open heart design becomes a universal symbol of hope and love. Because if your heart is open, love will always find its way in. The hotter the hot. The colder the cold. The greater the demand. The more you need Duralast. Batteries built to exceed the need. Batteries built to meet or exceed original equipment standards for cold cranking amps. Batteries built with the power to hold up to heavy electrical demands. Batteries so good they come with a coast to coast warranty. Only at AutoZone. The 2009 Rose Bowl game. Coverage begins New Year's Day at 4.30 Eastern on ABC. If you plan on building, furnishing, or remodeling your home, or you're just tired of paying retail, don't spend another dollar. Now, you can enjoy an incredible selection of top quality name brand products priced up to 50% less than retail. Take the first step towards saving hundreds or even thousands of dollars on nearly anything for your home. Call for your free Direct Buy Insider's Guide to Buying Direct and learn what retailers don't want you to know. Each full color page of the insider's guide is packed with powerful information discover some of the hundreds of thousands of products available from over 700 name brand manufacturers everything including furniture cabinets appliances flooring lighting fixtures and so much more all without retail markups at direct buy you can't afford to miss this valuable opportunity call the number on your screen now to get your own direct buy insider's guide you'll also receive a visitor's pass and map to the direct buy showroom nearest you the sooner you call the sooner you'll be buying direct, so call now. ESPN's College Football is presented by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. And in part by the auto parts experts at AutoZone. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Cincinnati Bearcats, 13th in the country, headed to the FedEx Orange Bowl. 10 wins, the Big East champs, and they're losing to 7 and 5 Hawaii, 24 to 10 here. Mana Silva taken off the field. He was injured moments ago on that kickoff. And this Cincinnati offense has one yard of offense in the second half. Full start, number 66 offense, five yard penalty, first down. This game's been littered by flags. That's Sam Griffin. You know, Brian Kelly told us that his team had to win this game. They had to represent the Big East. And it was also a chance to move up in the rankings from number 13. And yet here they are, down two touchdowns to a team in a rebuilding year that's just finding its groove. Here's Pike now. Plenty of time, and he gets it to Keith. And that was Ryan Mouton. Yeah. Well, you know, for Cincinnati, you know, champions have to respond. Yeah, if the play like champions, you have to find a way to get back into the game. Right now, they're being out hit, out hustled, and that was Dowling coming up making the play. So it'll make for a second and twelve. Fight. Good coverage, so Pike is going to run it himself, and he's out at the 40-yard line. Rod, I bet you there's a lot of people 
that have watched Boise State this year and you know what Boise did to Hawaii we we did that game they beat him 27 to 7 they manhandled Hawaii saying are you telling me this Cincy team is going to a BCS Bowl and we're going to be left out at 12 and 0 well let's be honest over the last couple of years there's been a lot of talk about you know the Big East yeah, ever since they lost Virginia Tech and Boston College whether they deserve an automatic BCS bid and West Virginia has helped the conference the last couple of years with wins and BCS games over Georgia and Oklahoma. Third and five for Pike. Pressure. He gets away from it. Now looks downfield. It is batted and falls incomplete. And Hawaii's defense does it again. Since he just can't get anything done, Joshua Leonard coming in strong there. Batting that down, breaking that up. Yeah, great pressure inside and from the edge. Making it really tough on Pike. Nowhere to go with the ball. A crowd around Gilliard, who's their main offensive threat right now. And this Cincinnati offense is really struggling. Really struggling. Takes a bounce. Washington fields it at the 10. He's taken down at the 13 yard line. So 11.23 to go. Hawaii will have the ball. Cincinnati in a deep, deep hole as Alexander heads back out into the field. Follow me where I go to to a little place I know, and there we step. Young All right, you guys ready? Hold on tight. Join your friends and ride the open mountains. Sean White Snowboarding. In stores now, rated E10 to T. This place used to be filled with CDs and DVDs. Now it's all right in here, with room to spare. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, learn from the master. Good. That is fantastic. Yeah, you like that, huh? Man, I can take it all with me. <laughs> oh, yeah, hilarious. Now there's a 500 gig storage solution that docks and protects all your songs and videos. The new Free Agent Go from Seagate. The best gifts ever. This year, a Radio Shack associate suggested a GPS receiver for my husband. Later, the kids tried to find Santa with it. And amazingly, it took us to this small town where we found a great little diner. Wasn't Christmas fun? Yeah. Hot chocolate, kids. The kids will never forget it. And it all began with the help I got at Radio Shack. Everything worth listening to is now on Sirius. Right now, add the best of XM to your Sirius subscription at Radio Shack. Ruby Tuesday's handcrafted minis are bold on flavor and big on taste. Beef, turkey, and crab cake minis. Our new mini trio, 25 great burgers with endless fries starting at $5.99. The new Ruby Tuesday, so good, it's guaranteed. Nothing transforms any room of the house quite like a fathead. Yeah! Bigger gifts are better gifts. Go to fathead.com now and get a gift that will make their holiday. Well, yesterday the Cincinnati Bearcats had the chance to visit Pearl Harbor Memorial. Of course, it is Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day for most of our country already as we've gone after midnight here. It'll be tomorrow in a few hours in Hawaii. That's a good chance for them to see and touch history here on the islands. That's an important thing. I'm glad that's a trip that they were able to make. Undoubtedly, Coach Brian Kelly taking advantage of the trip here to Hawaii. Get the team over there. Right now, the Hawaii offense back out on the field with a 24 to 10 lead. And now, big David Farmer. He's going to plow ahead to the 18 yard line taken down by Corey Smith. Now you know Tess we were chatting during the break because Hawaii is up by 14. It doesn't mean the game's over. And this is not an offense that's designed to shorten the game by running the football. They will by and large continue the run and shoot. So Cincinnati should have a, should have a chance to get back in this ball game because throwing the ball will not run the clock as much as rushing the football well. Coach Kelly knows that but he needs his defense to step up here. Second and five. They go with. Five receivers for Alexander. 
Alexander, here's an opportunity for Cincy, and they come up with it. And just like that, things change. Brandon Underwood. Boy, did you nail that rod. This time of the game, you need the running game to close it out, but that's not what the Warriors do. That's one of the criticisms of the run and shoot is that you can't close out ball games by running effectively. You have to keep doing what you've done before. And here, you just have a tipped ball by Terrell Bird, knocks it up in the air, and then a great job by Underwood picking it off and taking it back to the house. So just like that, Cincinnati is able to make it a one possession game. 20 yard interception return and the extra point up and good. So the Cincinnati offense still has not done a thing in this second half, but now they're only down a score. Well, Monday night, two teams atop the NFC South, both with nine and three records, meet up. Tampa and Carolina on Monday Night Football at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown delivered by UPS. Jeff Garcia playing very well for Tampa Bay this year. Demetrius Under, Brandon Underwood, who is playing for Mike Mickens, who was having a sensational year, but he's out with a knee injury. He'll be back for the Orange Bowl. Underwood with a 20 yard interception return for a touchdown. Yeah, give a lot of credit though to Terrell Bird who made that play. We talked earlier, you know, about playing like a champion, overcoming the adversity, and Bird and Underwood made a play to make that happen. As you see, both teams have made points off turnovers. 14 points for each team off turnovers. I think this is a critical 10 minutes for Cincinnati. And for the Big East Conference, they have to represent themselves well as champions of a conference headed to the FedEx Orange Bowl. And things started off with that man right there, Dominic Goodman, on the very first series of the game with his separated shoulder leaving the game. And he's their star receiver, Mr. Reliable on offense. And they've been having a tough time without him. Yeah, well, what happened was with him out, they had to go to the running game and that worked in the first half but Hawaii loaded up on it in the second half and now they only have one real threat at receiver in Gilliard. Here's Malcolm Lane from the one. And Lane gets out just to the 20 yard line. So 10 19 to go. And how will Hawaii respond after the turnover and the touchdown by Cincinnati. Well they they have to keep doing their offense now clearly it's a one possession game. They really can't think about how to shorten the game or anything like that. They've got to push you know pedal to the metal here. They, they, they got to come out and keep doing it. they got to throw throw the screen pass throw it down the field. Libre. Gain of three yards on the run. That's the second time in a row that they have run the ball on first down. And that's really not their MO now. I mean, they're running shoot team. And they need to come out on first down and throw it. You got to mix it up. I get that. And Ron Lee is excellent at doing that. But they need to get their confidence and their mojo back in their run and shoot. They've got to throw early on downs, I think, a little bit more. Ron Lee, one of the earliest disciples of the run and shoot system. And now that time of the game when it can work against you. Three by one here on second and seven for Greg Alexander. Pressure off the edge. They pick it up. But he cannot connect with Aaron Bain. Yeah, well, you know, again, you've got a young quarterback, or I should say an inexperienced quarterback. Yeah, you have to make sure you get his confidence back. Tight ball game, yet you, you have the ball picked off, and now you come back and you have a bad throw. Well, they got to find what he wants to do. What makes him comfortable? Call a play that makes him happy and throw that play. They could use it right here. Third and seven. Need to get out to the 30.
Pressure off the edge again, and this time they're able to get him. He gets rid of it at the last second. I don't know if he was tied up at first, but they're marking it down where Libre was at the 15. But D'Angelo Smith and Connor Barwin, they had a meeting at Greg Alexander. Yeah, they brought the corner blitz twice in a row. D'Angelo Smith coming from the left side. They picked him up on the last play, not this time. And Connor Barwin, who's been wreaking havoc all night, you know, came in from the right side. So Tim Grasso into punt and DJ Woods at his 45 so since he could have great field position here Woods with a running start and Woods breaks free and is inside the 30. So how things have changed just in the past couple minutes the interception return for a touchdown stout defense by Cincy and now great field position for the Bearcats. And now for tonight's game track brought to you by Timberland. Well it was a recovered fumble at the five yard line that got Hawaii going early in the third quarter set up a couple easy scores including this tremendous touchdown pass to John Maderos from Alexander that put them up in this ball game and then you get the big play here in the fourth quarter the pick after Terrell Bird takes the ball up in the air Underwood takes it back 20 yards for a touchdown and it's now a one possession game. So Tony Pike trying to rally the Big East champs here. Play action over the middle. It was wide open and just threw it behind Charlie Howard as his helmet came off. Teo Monte was in defensively for Hawaii. Well you know it's been pressure all night and Pike stands in there and takes the hit. And Howard just could not come up with this thing as it was thrown a little bit behind him. But again, you have to be impressed with how Cincinnati has responded in the last five minutes. We talked about playing like the champion. Well, they've done that defensively. They've come up with some plays. Now the offense has to respond. Mike on second down. And he loses the ball there as he took a look to the left side and it just came out of his hand. Yeah well yeah, they've made a play on defense with the pick six. They get a nice punt return following another defensive stop. They're still waiting on the offense to make something happen. And this one just gets out of Pike's hand. Rod they've done nothing, nothing. offensively nothing. in the second nothing. 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 nothing at all. Nothing. Now, Brian Kelly has to be pleased that his defense has responded. The results of the play is the quarterback was not under pressure. The pass went forward. It's incomplete. Dustin Brutza comes in now on third down. They switch out quarterbacks. Third and ten. Brutza incomplete. He had Marty Gilliard right on that number one in the center of his chest, and they couldn't connect. And look at Brian Kelly. I mean, there's not much to this. He just runs the inside route. Ball's right there. Probably would have picked up the first down. He let it get to his pads. Didn't catch it with his hands. So Jake Rogers will come in to attempt a 44 yarder. He hit from 53. Also had one block tonight. And Rogers puts it through. 8-19 to go. Hawaii lead is cut to four. Defense and special teams have uh, really helped Cincinnati get back in this ball game. Ten straight points because of those plays. We remind you that you can get your weekly dose of NFL news and analysis. First with Sunday NFL Countdown. Then at 7 Eastern, Chris Berman and John Saunders with the day's highlights and scores during Sports Center Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM and Sports Center presented by Bud Light Sunday on ESPN. Boy, with this uh, late start to the last regular season game of the college football season, you could have got up early, started your day with game day on Saturday morning, and we'll take you right to Sports Center in the morning well, I, on a full day of NFL. We, we did, and the game day started at what? Uh, 5 a.m. here. Yeah, and 5 trust me, I was awake for it. <laughs> it was a long day, 5 a.m. for game day, and then all the great football games after that. 
If you're a football fan, Hawaii is the place to be. You wake up and have breakfast, and you're already watching games. <laughs> and this is a good one to finish up your evening with. Hawaii looking for the upset. 24 to 20. They have dominated the play offensively in this second half, but the special teams and defense of Cincinnati now coming alive. Touch back there. Malcolm Lane fielded it. Well, I'm curious to see what Hawaii does on first down. The last couple times they've run the ball. They've tried that zone running play and they haven't really gotten an awful lot. And they've been in second and long and third and long. Curious to see whether they throw screen pass on first down or they throw the ball down the field. But they have to get their confidence back on offense. I think screen pass would be a perfect fit. Well, for what we've seen out of this offense the past couple trips on the field. Yeah, otherwise, Carter Barwin might be in that backfield again. He is something to find defensive end for Cincinnati, number five. Great pro prospect. Loads of speed. He's been in that backfield a lot tonight. Wait till he figures out how to play defensive end. <laughs> exactly. Here's Alexander trying to get away from that front four, but can't get away from Terrell Bird. Yeah. And, and there you go. I mean, that, that's probably what's concerning Ron Lee, the offensive coordinator, that they can't protect. And so he wants to do something other than throw the ball in first down, which is why we were talking about screen passes. You know, that rush is going to come. You got to find a way to get something on first down, and they just can't line up and run the football at the Cincinnati defense. Bird's been one of the players who has come on so strong during this finishing kick that Cincinnati has put together to win the Big East. Second and 15 now, two by two for Alexander with Libre in the backfield with him. Shovel pass. And Libre out to the 21. Well, Cincinnati has really put pressure on Hawaii. One change they've made since the first half or early in the third quarter, they're bringing more pressure. They are sending safeties, they're sending corners on blitzes. And they weren't doing that earlier in the ball game. They were letting their front four apply the pressure. Now it's, hey, we're bringing the house. Third and nine. Not much time coming off the clock. Since he's defense trying to help out again in this comeback effort here in the fourth. Alexander. That would have been short of a first down anyway. As he tried to get it to Bain, and the Cincy defense has responded well here in these last few minutes. You see what pressure does? It affects a quarterback. I mean, a couple of sacks, and now accuracy is gone for Alexander. I mean, it's been a while since we've seen some good throws from him because he can't get comfortable in the pocket. Tim Grasso back out there, and once again, DJ Woods has the opportunity to get good field position for the Bearcats. Woods with a fair catch he calls for at the 40. 6.37 to go, and Cincinnati offense comes back out in the field, trailing by four. And keep in mind, you look at Brad Edwards' projected BCS Bowl matchups, and there is Cincinnati in the FedEx Orange Bowl. And I know we brought it up earlier. You look at what's happening tonight, and there have to be folks with Boise State saying, we're 12-0. We're likely not going to get an at-large, and this Big East champion is losing to a team we thumped. Now, a lot of people have criticized the automatic qualifying situation, and this could be the poster child for it here tonight. Here's Gilliard. Well, 46. Well, keep in mind, Tess, that Brian Kelly said, hey, you know, we're out here in Hawaii, but we have to represent the Big East. We got to win this ball game, and we got to climb in the ranking. He understands that the Big East reputation is at stake. And folks are probably, you know, selling short what West Virginia has done the last couple of they years. They accomplished a lot for the conference, but this would be a big slap in the face to the credibility and for those who make that criticism. A little ammunition. Goble. Goble is swarmed. I give Brian Kelly a lot of credit with what he's done at this program. He has done something very special 
in just two years. And you know, he said, I asked him, said, Brian, what do you say to recruits when you go in? He said, hey, I tell them, come to play for us. We play in a conference that you can win it. Yep. You can get to a BCS game easily. Yep. Eight teams, you don't have to play Oklahoma and Nebraska. Yep. And no we can do it. And no yet. conference championship. So yep. Brian Kelly is very smart at taking advantage of what's right in front of him. And he did better than anybody else yep. in the Big East. So and, I give him credit. And did it a lot faster than he expected. Didn't expect it to happen in two years. 34. Big down here for the Bearcats. Play clock ticking down, and Grutza has to call a timeout. Charge timeout of the half, Cincinnati. It will be a 30-second timeout. You, you talk about winning the Big East, and look, Cincinnati won out over West Virginia, who many people thought would win the Big East this year, and then there was a lot of fanfare about Pitt, but in Please close game games, block. Cincinnati Five. managed to get wins when they had to. You look through the Cincinnati schedule. I mean, they did what they were supposed to do. But it's not all that impressive when you talk about, you know, the wins against Miami, a close win against Akron, beating a Marshall team. But good, solid close wins. But then you look at a 24-point loss to Connecticut, a 24-point loss to Connecticut. And if you tack on this one, I think there's going to be a lot of people pointing fingers at this BCS well, run. Well, yeah, I mean, there's not a marquee win on the there schedule. Is that's clear. But then there's not a marquee team out of the Big East. That's and, and their non-conference schedule, you know, they had Oklahoma. They weren't going to beat Oklahoma, you know. And that's clear, 52-26. So when you look at the, the schedule, where were the marquee games? It doesn't Oklahoma, exist. And there's nothing in the conference to be a marquee win. Kelly just went out there and said, okay, here's the task. Let's go accomplish it. And they did, going 6-1 and one and earning the right to be in the FedEx Orange Bowl. But now a major test. Gut check time. Third and four. Grutza tipped up. Intercepted or not. Incomplete. Hawaii defense holds. Fanoti getting his big hands up. Now the defensive line and getting a piece of that ball. And this was almost picked. There's the tip and then an effort and it probably should have been picked. As it looked like it was. Keo Monte. Who had a shot at it and just couldn't hang on to it. Since he punts it away. And Washington lets it bounce. And a smart play by D'Angelo Smith to get down there and get on top of it. And the way the Cincy defense has played, watch out. We invite you to help us beat cancer and to donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research. You can call 1 800 4 Jimmy V or log on to jimmyv.org 100% of donations awarded to cancer research and of course for those who follow the Cincy program has very close calls to Brian Kelly and his wife Pocky who's battled breast cancer and we encourage everybody to jump on board oh, what a job they've done with the Jimmy V Foundation 80 million dollars raised since its inception all going towards cancer research Lee break from his end zone, loose ball. And the Cincy defense comes up big again, a safety. So add on two points and they will get the ball. Well, big play by Corey Smith. Huge play, huge play. And again, we talked about it, this run and shoot offense closing out a game and when you have to run the football, they don't have a two back system to line up with the fullback and tailback and do it. They run the outside zone. They run east and west. And that east and west gets you in the backfield, a bad handoff. All of a sudden now, the defense and special teams for Cincinnati have gotten them back into this game with a great chance to go ahead. Joe Tracy's defense has played outstanding here in this fourth quarter. As you see him taking a drink of water there, well deserved. They have kept their team in this. Their offense still hasn't accomplished hardly anything in this second half, 
but the defense has just played supreme the interception return and now the safety yeah they dialed it up a notch and they put a lot more pressure on Hawaii and I mean Tracy started bringing blitzes you know he turned guys loose they they just did what they had to when they were down by 14 points to get back in the ball game they got a pick six they got a stop they got a good punt return and now they get a safety and Rod that safety is so critical because now it makes it where a field goal puts them up a point. Yeah, and just think if you are Hawaii offensively you've had three opportunities to close the game or shorten the game run some time off pick up some first downs three opportunities and they've done nothing that way. So here's the kick from Hawaii and Smith it bounces off him that's a live ball and he just pushes it out of bounds near the 30 yard line. Just under five minutes to go off the hands of Smith. He misjudged it. He came he came out too far on that ball. He misjudged it and tried to lean back a little bit to catch it. And that's why it bounced off the pad. He just misjudged it. Led the nation in interceptions a year ago. I ended up being on a flight with his family. They said, hey, we're excited. We go to Hawaii, we go to the Orange Bowl, and then we're going to the Senior Bowl. They're up for all the travels with him. The heck with the economy. <laughs> You know, that's a, a point a lot of the Cincinnati families, you know, had pointed towards this game as a, kind of the end of the season big hoopla because no one was expecting a BCS bid when this schedule was set. No, this was a nice reward for a program on the rise, scheduled this we game against game Hawaii. To four, five, six. Four, five, six. Brian Kelly told us, he said, hey, we scheduled this not thinking we would be in a BCS game. But they are. They're representing the Big East. They're going to be in the FedEx Orange Bowl. A great job done by Kelly the last two years. But as he emphasized, we have to win this game. We cannot lose this game to this Hawaii team and represent our conference that way. Well, his defense got that message, and he's waiting on his offense now. Here's Grutza. He's pressured now, trying to get to the outside. And that is complete. And here goes Gilliard. Marty Gilliard. He is gone. Cincy takes the lead. 69 yards. There was no offense, and then just one single play, and they come back. Uh, it was a great job by Grutza to stay alive once the play broke down, and then you get a missed tackle on Gilliard. This is a nice throw, but watch Gilliard slip a tackle, and then he's off to the races. That was it. A missed tackle results in a 69 yard touchdown pass. And Cincinnati is now ahead. Nine missed tackles by Hawaii. Amazing turn of events. A game that was 24 to 10 Hawaii in complete control. The defense came up big for Cincy and then the offense provided this. Let's take a look. You're watching Gilliard at the top of the screen. And he's free in front of a safety that's deep and behind a corner. So he's in the open. Now the safety comes up flying out of control, misses the tackle. The missed tackle made all the difference. Otherwise, that's a 15, 20 yard completion. Instead, it's a 69 yard touchdown pass, and Cincinnati is ahead. Cincinnati has scored 19 points in the last seven minutes and 24 seconds. Rod, you brought it up. When it was 24 10, you said champions, teams going to a BCS, cannot play this poorly. You cannot represent yourself like this. Yeah, they, they had. However, that message got to them, they heard it. Well, and it came through on their defense. It their did. defense stepped up and made plays, and then the special teams made plays. And that's what set it up for them. And the offense finally now made a big play and it was Gilliard the guy that we mentioned had to be the guy to make play because Goodman has been out since the very first play with a separated shoulder. Goodman who has all the big numbers he is their go to guy. Key part of that offense but he has been out since the first series with a separated shoulder. They are hoping they can get him back for the game against Virginia Tech in the FedEx Orange Bowl. We will see. 
Malcolm Lane will take a knee. And now the Hawaii offense, as a flag comes in late, will take to the field and they need to respond. A lot of flags tonight. During the kick, holding, number 18 on the return team. The penalty, 10 yard penalty would be from the 20 yard line, first down. Well, Tess, we talked about responding in a championship way, and that's what the defense for Cincinnati did. Down 24-10, they set this up. Bird with a tip pass. Underwood takes the pick six on it, gets him within one possession, and then a big stop, a sack of Alexander. Then the safety gets him back in, a short field setup. Great job by the defense getting Cincinnati back in this ball game in the fourth quarter. Defensive coordinator Joe Tracy and his team really cranked it up here. And that ball looked like it almost hit the back of an offensive lineman. For three quarters, it was Hawaii in control. Oh, you know, and the fourth quarter, about 12 minutes ago, up by 14, it looked like Hawaii was one drive away from salting this game away. But they couldn't do it, and Cincinnati rose up and made a play, and that was the, the tip pass and the pick by Underwood to change the momentum in the game. Alexander pressured again and taken down right near his goal line. And that was Adam Hopper who got in there that time from the inside for his third sack. And pressure from the outside trying to step up can't do it and now the fifth sack of the night phenomenal effort from the Cincinnati defense Greg Alexander has improved compared to what he was coming over from Juco opened up the year against Florida had a miserable outing tonight better but he still needs to come up big here in crunch time. Slings it out, and that is overthrown. He was trying to get it to Greg Salas. So now Hawaii will be punting from the end zone with just 3.50 to go. Uh, and now it goes over to Cincinnati. Can Cincinnati close out the game? If they have some bit of a running game. They had it early. If they get it back, they can close it out. D.J. Woods to return. And the Cincinnati defense has been making for great field position this entire fourth quarter. Grasso's punt. Fair caught at the 40. 37-yard punt. The way this night started for Cincinnati. A little bit of a dark cloud in the sunny skies here. Dominic Goodman. Seven touchdowns, nearly a thousand yards receiving on the year, but a separated shoulder on their first offensive series. So that put pressure on other areas of the offense, and they didn't respond until late when his partner, Marty Gilliard, had a 69 yard touchdown here in the fourth quarter to take the lead. 29 24 after Hawaii controlled the middle section of this game into the fourth quarter. They had a 24 to 10 lead. They're hoping to get Goodman back for the FedEx Orange Bowl. Goble, he's got running room. And a gain of eight. And this is what championship teams do. This is how you finish out a game. First down, everybody knows you have to run the football. Brian Kelly runs the ball, they pick up eight yards. That runs the clock, that keeps that defense on the field, that hurts momentum for Hawaii. They're not feeling great about themselves right now. All he does is win. Be it at Grand Valley State, Central Michigan, or now here at Cincinnati. The only current Big East coach with 150 or more career wins. One of the hot coaches in college football. 
And Goble with first down yardage there to the 28. Yep. And, and that picks up another first down. And now, if you're Hawaii, you really need to start thinking about your timeouts and how to use them. This is one of those games that Hawaii is going to go back and watch plays in this fourth quarter and get really upset with themselves, Rod. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, they had a chance to pick up some first downs, to do something, you know, to shorten the game, and they couldn't do it. And that Cincinnati defense blows up and made play. Goble again. Goes straight up the middle to the 25 yard line, a pickup of two. It's taken down by Satterley. We are here at Aloha Stadium, 13th ranked Cincinnati and Hawaii. Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore. Cincy here is the Big East champs. They're headed to the FedEx Orange Bowl to meet up with Virginia Tech. Hawaii, well, you know, a year ago they were the BCS team, but they lost everything. A rebuilding kind of year, seven and five. They're going to play in the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl. And they were up 24 to 10 until the Cincy defense got going. And then the offense responded, and now they're trying to put away this game. I've been watching this clock run, and I can't believe. Three timeouts for Hawaii. I can't believe they hadn't called one after that last play. First charge timeout of the half, Hawaii. They should have called one at two minutes. 30 seconds ran off the clock. 30-second timeout. Well, played right into uh, Brian Kelly's hand as they ran the ball. Hawaii didn't call the timeout, and they were able to take 30 plus seconds off the clock. So 126 to go now. Hawaii with two timeouts and a third down. Obviously, they got to get the stop. Now, Rod, you said where's the timeout? Yeah. People in the stands were saying the same thing. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, you're sitting there with with three of them. Two minutes to go. Uh, you got to start stopping the clock. You got to stop the clock. You can't let them mill around the huddle and burn 30, 35 seconds off the clock. I'll tell you, Rod, I couldn't agree more with what Brian Kelly said to us yesterday. He said, We have to represent the Big East Conference. We cannot lose this game to this team. This would have been such a blow to the credibility of the conference, sending your yep. champion. To a loss here against yep. this level of a Hawaii team. Hawaii has been a good program for many, many years, but you know this is a team that a Big East champion, a BCS champion, birth team just shouldn't have this kind of outing against with an L. And they now they can seal away a W here in a couple of plays. Roots up. And a penalty comes in. He had the first down yardage, but a flag comes in late. Well, the other thing, Brian Kelly has to be holding number 83 offense. 10 yard penalty, third down. Yeah, that's Kazima Lee, the big tight end. Uh, he's got to be pleased with the way his defense and his special teams responded when they were down by 14. And that, that was a championship response. Undoubtedly. There you see the holding right in front of you, 83. Clearly. So Hawaii still with the two timeouts, 121 as the penalty will back up Cincinnati. Yeah, and stop the clock. And stops the clock. So that's the best of both worlds. And now the clock will run. So a third down and the line to make for Cincinnati is the 17 you, yard you, line. You gotta you gotta burn a timeout. Undoubtedly. Second charge timeout of the half, Hawaii. So they have the third down. They get the stop time. here. And then it'll bring up a fourth down if they can pull that off with the one timeout. Now we've heard plenty about Brian Kelly with all the coaching changes on there. Please put 112 on the game clock. 1 1 2. When you have the success that he's had, you're going to be on the short list for coaching candidates at bigger and better programs. Here's what he had to say about that. 
I want to win championships. My my background is is you know playing for championships. I can't do anything about the BCS and playing for championships, but I can at the school that I'm at. And, and I wanted to play for a national championship in Cincinnati. Uh, gives us that opportunity. They're committed to doing it in the long run. You know what? I agree with him. Where else would you want to be than at a school where you can go there and within two years, because of the conference you play in, only eight teams, no championship game, no dominant team in that conference, and it has, it's one of the automatic qualifying BCS birth conferences. Well, it's a good yeah, spot to yeah. be in. And he's got big plans. I mean, he wants to add seating to Nippert Stadium, get, uh, get a few more fans in there. He's going to get a practice field facility, practice field, be practice field there. He's got plans. And he's got the commitment from the university to go there. He got that this Tuesday. So here's third and ten with Dustin Grutza. And four receivers with Goble in the backfield with them. Grutza going deep. And a penalty comes in. That'll be pass interference as Charlie Howard had turned around for the ball and Calvin Roberts. With the PI. Yeah, a very, very clear and easy. Pass interference, number 23 defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Easy penalty to call. You have to make a play on the ball. He never does anything towards the ball. He gets to the receiver, doesn't get his head around, doesn't get his arm around. You have to make a play on the ball. Instead, he simply jumps into the receiver. And now with just one timeout left, Cincinnati can manage his clock towards a win. And, and how about that aggressive play by Cincinnati to take a shot at the end zone there. Third and ten. Hawaii had one last chance to come up big defensively. The 11th penalty of the game for Hawaii. And there have been many of the 15 yard variety. In fact there have been five 15 yarders. And, and I talk about that play as being aggressive because if that's simply an incomplete pass. It would have stopped the clock and Hawaii would have had their time out still. So that was a big one there. Well for three quarters coach Greg McMacken thought he had himself a signature win. Thought things were heading that way. Third and last charge time out of the half for Hawaii. It'll be a 30 second timeout. I like the attitude. I like the disposition of McMacken rod and I think. With the new facilities and the improvements, they're going to have continued success here in the Please West. Please set the game clock to 48 seconds, 4-8. I think that's right. I think he's gotten the commitment from the university here. He's got things in place. And one of the things he's pleased about is that they have the run and shoot in place. Now he's got the quarterback situation resolved. He's got Alexander this year and next year. And then he has the young quarterback stacked up the way he wants to have them stacked up for the future. And he's going to have a visit to the postseason in the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl. Meanwhile, the FedEx Orange Bowl awaits for Coach Kelly and Cincinnati and Virginia Tech. What do you make of that matchup? I tell you one thing, Tyrod Taylor is now playing great quarterback for Virginia Tech. He's starting to really feel it, you know. Uh, I think it's going to be a tough matchup for Cincinnati, but it ought to be a great game. So as the clock counts down coach Kelly will celebrate the first 11 win season in Cincinnati history and you got to really put things in perspective as to what Cincinnati football has been through the years and where he has gotten it to. Absolutely. And this place was widely considered a stepping stone for a lot of coaches. There was a lot of turnover. Assistant coaches came and went yearly. Head coaches look to go somewhere else. He has it. He's he's made it a different place. He's determined to win at Cincinnati. He's had two great seasons, and he thinks he can win a championship there, a national championship. I have a delay here because a fan ran out into the field. Security is removing him. And he said, "I don't want to think of this as a stepping stone type job because it's not that any longer. He's being well compensated. He's got the facility upgrade coming his way." And in a few weeks, hello FedEx Orange Bowl for the Cincinnati Bearcats. Boy, they pulled it out.
It was rough going for a while there, and then a fourth quarter rally. But that rally by the defense. The defense got it done, got a pick six for them, got a couple of key stops, forced a safety, and all of a sudden, they only needed one play from their offense in the fourth quarter, and they got it when Gilliard had a 69-yard touchdown catch and run following a missed tackle. An 11 and 2 season for the Bearcats exceeding expectations a great job to get through all the injuries at quarterback this season great coaching the development of this program continues he said we need to win this game we have to represent the Big East for a while it was going south and then they pulled it out with a phenomenal fourth quarter rally our final score Cincinnati. 29 Hawaii 24 coming up next here on ESPN 2 it's Mad Nation for Rod Gilmore and our entire crew I'm Joe Tessitore thanks for watching everyone Aloha Fires D makes the catch to the 10 it's the most sought after bus ticket in